the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I am this grounded. Mm. I am this grounded. No food to eat, but I am disgrounded. And Satan comes to stand close to you like the wife of Job and say, Why don't you just curse God? Of what use is being a worker in the house of God when God will keep passing you and blessing strangers? When they will come for miracle service and receive and go back and you are still a worker and he's acting as if he's not seeing you? Listen, listen, many believers are not taught that when things don't work and you believe God, it is also faith. Faith is not only when results come. Sometimes faith is why you stand when results don't come. Listen to me. When Jesus hung upon that cross, in spite of the pain on his hand, it took strength and stamina to remain there. The pain did not leave him because he was the son of God. Because many believers have not been taught that sometimes, listen to me, that sometimes, on your path to growth the weight of what is coming on you will test your foundation like a farmer goes to a farm just because you see blisters on a farmer's hand does not mean he's not healthy it means he's hard working listen to me let your interpretation about life and the dealings of things in your life be corrected tonight because there are many of you who are calling god names whereas heaven is clapping for you earth is calling you faithless whereas heaven is standing at an attention and say this young lady lost four people in four months and she's still waking up as usual to pray whereas some ignorant person will see you somewhere and say where is your faith that four people are dying don't get me wrong i believe in the blessings of god but believers must be taught that the solidity the stability of your foundation is tested when things don't work your way and you still call him faithful i heard of a couple not not a recent story from their wedding happy they were on their way to the reception and a truck just came and hit them and that's how the husband died with his bow tie right there it doesn't matter whether it's a curse or it's a charm or it's an arrow he's dead what does such a bride do you will think people will come to comfort her until you start hearing that she's a witch that's what people will say imagine adding on that precious lady's pain instead of coming to comfort her they'll say we've always known this lady has killed her son Aye. life can be cruel if you don't know your god and you cannot stand alone and praise him alone if you still need a keyboard and you still need a bass guitar and you still need a music director your foundation is small there are times that your pain becomes a writer and it will write songs that only you can understand songs that are not supposed to make sense to anybody except you uniquely designed to praise god through your pain 
I told God there is nothing in life that will ever come to me that will make me look at God and say, God, why can't I? No. Many people see the things that we do and they think it's because of the result God has brought today. No. The results did not come in one day. Can you love God when you don't understand Him? Can you love God when you don't hear Him? Were you taught that a believer is not just one who receives results. Sometimes a believer is one who stands. Not just while he's waiting for results. Read Hebrews 11. Some died without receiving the promise. If you are just going to wait 30 years, it will be okay. But there are people who waited till they died. And the Bible added them and called them elders who obtained. What did they obtain now? Because they died without receiving the promise. We need to teach a generation that God is not an ATM. We need to teach a generation that God is not a politician who is just a job giver. Remember, I'm teaching on growth. There are other aspects coming. We need to teach a generation that God is not just some, some lobbyist. No. It's God. In the beginning, God. At the end of your life, if I have God, and people just look at them. When people testify and we see what they are saying they got. I got a new job. This is the certificate. We clap and we somebody will help you and roll on the ground for your own sake. But when people get say, oh, I was born again. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. People just say, Oh, congratulations. So you go and join the queue of, and know what we have been going through. There are many questions in your mind now. The answer is what you are hearing. If you really love God beyond certain levels, there will be need to ask that question. Faithful and true. Faithful and true. It's the reason why many preachers cannot go to funerals. What are they going to see? What happens when you have conducted a miracle service? And right after that, someone dies. And you are asked to come and preach the people. Now you... And they say, Pastor, why did this man die? God is faithful, Lord. Even when you do not have answers, God is greater. God is faithful. He is mighty. What I go through or do not go through should never ever be a reason. Please sit down. Your foundation. Your foundation. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. Let's tie up this first point. Just the A part. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. It says, nevertheless, the foundation of God does what? Standard sure. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standard sure. Hmm. So when you build on Christ, you will stand sure. Growth systems. I needed to just walk this out with us so that we don't get excited because of the other things that I'm going to be sharing and saying and forget the fact that if your foundation is faulty you know let me tell you this let me tell you this please look up honestly speaking I get hundreds of text messages 
every day from people you can imagine because of the nature of what i do people send me text messages from all around just requesting prayer or just letting me know the things happening around their lives and sometimes i use those text messages to gauge both the level of growth and the spiritual orientation of the people i am amazed sometimes at how how offended people can be over the matters that they think they are trusting god for a miracle for that they have not yet gotten people have sent all kinds of text messages to my phone abusing both me and god for not getting school fees see that since he's, you, you can't see him the one who has clearly said he's representing him you insult me and ask me to help and tell god that you insulted both of us just because school fees did not come there are people who they are panic and the text messages just because a child falls ill oh boy the text messages they write why is god doing this and that i'm a giver i'm a tighter why is he saying this and then later on maybe i'm in a meeting and you are not answering again you see this is the kind of thing i'm saying and god is not faithful and blah blah all for that solid when the shunammite woman's son died the prophet sent Gehazi. He said, go and find out from that woman. This is a child that is dead already. When she met Gehazi, say, it's all well. What did the woman say? All is well. Let me just go and see the prophet. He said, yeah, and imagine. No, 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 no. Don't worry. These are people who have strong foundations. What about Esther, Hadassah? I shared with you in one of the days here. The king, there was an emergency. Her man is plotting to destroy the people of God. And then they are asking her, should I grant anything? No, 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 king, please take your time. I just want to prepare a banquet for you. Can you be calm under pressure? It's proof of stability. It's not just a proof of maturity. Some things are more than just age and psychology. It's a reflection of no knowledge of God. That my panic, regardless of how I go around it, makes no difference except God built a house. I will labor in vain and stroll around from pillar to post. So my soul find rest. Find rest. Like something that is missing and you found it. Find rest. Number two, let's hurry up. The excellency of your spiritual foundation is number one. Number two. Now pay attention. We finish handing over everything to the Lord. But that's not all it takes to grow. The second key. If you want to grow and grow sustainably. Is you have to understand the cosmos. Please write it down. An understanding of this earth and the world system. You will never grow if you do not understand the world that you are living in. The cosmos. This social system. It's not enough to understand God's kingdom alone. You have to understand this world. My God. How many believers are ignorant of the cosmos? We do not understand how this system works. And so we cannot thrive and grow. Jesus prayed a prayer, John chapter 17. We'll read a few scriptures here. Please pay attention and let's learn. John chapter 17, we'll read from verse 15 to, 7, to 21. 15 to 21. Please look up everyone, it's projected. This is the prayer of Jesus. How many of you know that when Jesus prays, it will be answered? I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Not from evil. From the evil. Next verse. They are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. Uh-huh. 
sanctify them through your truth thy word is truth next verse 221 as thou hast sent me into the world even so i have sent them into the world for their sakes i sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth 20 neither pray i for these alone this is where you come in now but for them also which shall believe on me through their word 21 that they may be one as thou father art in me and i in thee that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou sent me jesus is praying and he's saying that father i'm keeping them in this system the same way i walk through this system their lives will be in the similitude of my experience in this system sanctify them separate them garrison them on the strength of your word your word is truth listen to me there are many things the bible says about this world the earth but the world the social sphere most believers may know god but they are ignorant about the world system and many times back to faulty foundations again we are taught that once you know god that's all and that's enough as important as that is you need to have intelligence over the world that you live in the bible tells us so many things about this cosmos this social system let's look at a few of them number one first john chapter five write down these scriptures please write all of them understanding the cosmos understanding the world system as a spiritual growth system or a, a kingdom growth system first john chapter 5 from verse 4 and 5 whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world the world again overcometh the world so the world and the system can be overcome it says and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith verse 5 who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that jesus is the son of god so the bible tells us that this system can be conquered that a man can rise above it it's an information god is giving you that regardless of how the world is you have an advantage there is a provision where the saints can rise above the grip of the world first corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18 first corinthians 3 and verse 18 please mm. it's projected if you can see it please let's read together one to read let no man deceive himself uh-huh if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world in this world let him become a fool that he may be wise let me explain to you what he's saying that means that there is a methodology there is an approach to life as defined by the cosmos are we together now and that on the strength of your understanding their way of doing things you may believe you are wise and the bible says compared to god's dimension of wisdom it is deception so it says let him become a fool it doesn't mean to be void of knowledge and understanding it means to subscribe to another system that may make you look like a fool based on god's standard so that you will be truly wise he tells you this that the system the modus operandi of the cosmos is antichrist is against the operation of the kingdom John 14 27 John 14 27 after that we'll go to first John 3 and verse 1 John 14 27 look up please another information Jesus is giving us here please look up those outside make sure you're following he says peace now he's talking of peace here I live with you my peace I give to you not as the world giveth give i unto you he says let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid that means these possibilities exist for as long as you are in this world the tendency for being perturbed 
and being in fear is something that will continue it will attempt to haunt you but he's saying the antidote to it is that i have routed my peace in some way and i have given it unto you my peace i give unto you first john chapter 3 and verse 1 don't be tired you are learning something first john 3 and verse 1 let's read behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of god it says therefore the world knoweth us not why because it knew him not do you know what this means god is revealing to you through apostle john that influence in the world system for a believer doesn't come easy it is difficult to be known it says the world knoweth us not they will not recognize us it will it will until they exhaust their options they will not easily recognize you so you can be a christian lecturer and be the best in your department and the system will continue to ignore you until you do something that makes them to not have a choice that means every believer recognized by the cosmos it is because the cosmos did not have an option this is what he's saying jesus was doing a lot of things and they refused to acknowledge it people will return back with testimonies i'm a leper look at my hands i said forget about that guy Nic nicodemus came and said rabbi we know we have been studying we have been we've taken your miracles as a case study and we know you are a man sent from god why didn't they say it in the open behold a man sent from god jesus is standing with barabbas a thief and they would allow barabbas to go and continue harassing as a capon because of how they hated jesus he's giving us an information here the information is not just that we are sons of god alone but he's telling you that influence in the cosmos if you are not born again and you refuse to subscribe to god's ways is easy so do not be surprised when you are doing a lot of great things as a believer and people refuse to acknowledge you you are the reason why this company is rising and when it if they have to appreciate you they generalize it all the staff have been hard working you have been serious but when a non-christian is there they isolate the person and so lavishly celebrate the person to offend you find comfort he opened your eyes to see that the world knoweth us not the word know there means approve, recognize, accredit, celebrate. James chapter 4 and verse 4. God is giving us wisdom. James 4 and verse 4. Look at me. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship, aha, uh -huh, is given an information. Friendship with the world is enmity with God whosoever will be a friend of the world is an enemy of god oh 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 now this is a, an interesting one don't be friends how do you relate don't be friends friendship with the world is enmity with god so how do you collect your salary how do you apply for a job how do you go for a birthday party of a business partner who is an unbeliever who you have to work together with that means when a scripture looks obviously wrong it means you have to look again are we together now the idea of friendship here listen very carefully is not relationship you must understand now he's not saying to not relate with the world friendship here he's talking of an attachment a fraternity with respect to your allegiance with respect to your values with respect to the government you submit to this is the context that james is talking about because as you will learn and you have learned here that everything multiplies on the basis of relationship many believers have erroneously carried this scripture and they have rejected every good thing in their life why because the bible talks of friendship with the world He's not saying to not love non-Christians. No. 
He's not saying to not participate in non-Christian activities. That's not what he's saying. He's talking about the fact that no matter how you relate with these people, it is important for you to understand that anything that threatens your convictions, your values, and ultimately your allegiance to God is fighting him in your life. Are we together? Two more scriptures and then we'll tie this up. First Timothy chapter 6, 7 and 8. I found this scripture and it blessed me so much. First Timothy 6 and then 7 and 8. We would have started from 6 but no problem. We'll hurry up because of time. Look at this. Apostle Paul is giving us another information about this world that we need to learn. What's the information? Read with me. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we can carry nothing out of it. Now this is a very good information. What is the information? You brought nothing into this world and on your way out you are not carrying anything you found here out. Verse 8 And having food and raiment let us therewith be content. Now listen very carefully. That means he's trying to tell you that while you interact with the cosmos that you should be able to priorize, prioritize your life in a way and manner that does not allow you forget that all of these things, the cars and the houses is simply supposed to define your comfort within your stay. Are we together? It's like renting a room in a hotel because you are there for one week. If all of a sudden you get so obsessed with the activity of that hotel as if you are not going to leave again, one week will clock and you did not even maximize the state. The purpose of renting the apartment is to allow you either have a meeting or rest or do whatever you have to do. So he's giving you here a mindset of contentment that comes from knowing, it tries to give you the understanding of a pilgrim. That nothing other than God is worth dying for. Are, are you getting the understanding here now? Yes. So by the time people act as if they would die for money, as if they would die for position. As if they would die for this. This is what they are violating. We brought nothing. There is no child that was born with an ATM. You came out from your mother's womb and said, This is my ATM with my name. I brought it from heaven. No. Nobody came with a key to any house. Nobody came with a Mercedes Benz key out of his mother's womb. No. When you know this, you can look at certain things in life and just say, let it go. And they say, why? For I brought nothing. Hmm. This is a revelation that will even help you in giving. You mean you just gave everything away? I brought nothing to this world. If I fall down and I die today, even this Bible will not follow me. Because they didn't come with me. Every story was written on earth here. That means the one thing I can take out of the earth, I must treasure it. The one thing that I can take out. Hmm. Believers, let's not live like fools. We must understand the cosmos. Thank God for money. Thank God for cars. And let me tell you this. Do, do not make a mistake of thinking I'm endorsing poverty or failure far from it. This teaching was designed to cause you to grow. This is how we grow. By being prepared to lose things. Nothing in this world should so possess you that you cannot lose it. That is a devil and that is a cause. Joshua Selman, the Lord has a need for your car let it go oh god is yours the lord has a need for your house let it go the lord has a need for koinonia let it go the foolish man 
was a foolish rich man for one reason he forgot that he did not bring anything he built bands and said my soul find rest not in god find rest when you find rest in prosperity you are finished already when you find rest in certificates you are finished already when you find rest in ministry in power in anointing you are finished already we brought nothing to this world please don't live your life over my dead body this ten naira it must come out except I'm, i will wear my father till, uh, uh. that kind of mindset is the mindset of somebody who does not understand the cosmos when you know you brought nothing to this world then you will also know that you must make sure that by the time you are leaving this world you will live empty so why are you holding on to many things Isn't it amazing that those who are really poor are the ones who are holding on to many things. Their hands are so full, God cannot bless them. Most people think it's blessed people who are greedy and stingy. No. That you don't have the resources are proof that your hands are too full to receive from God. It's those who release everything. He said, now give me your hands since you release everything. understanding the cosmos i promised you two more scripture let's hurry up john 16 33 john 16 and 33 now this is a big one believers pay attention let's read together one to read these things i have spoken to you uh-huh that in me ye might find peace you see peace again this peace is a very serious thing in the world ye shall have tribulation you went to school what does that mean whatever it is it doesn't mean peace <laughs> are we together it doesn't matter how you want to whether it's emotional whether it's prophetic whatever it is it is certainly not peace whatever it is is the opposite of what god gave you in this world you will have tribulation he says but be of good cheer he never said be of good cheer the tribulation will not come there is a system i have provided also to help you overcome you are not you are not being cheerful just because of nothing you are being cheerful because there is a system that you can route your victory out of it tribulation i don't know what i did that people don't like me i'm a nice man of god i'm a nice business i help people oh dear welcome to the world of men listen the condition to go through tribulation is that you are alive it's not even that you are successful is that you are what alive i am amazed at how many believers fret you know i've shared with you my story years ago it used to bother me a lot every time I'm misunderstood and every time people you know don't seem to be comfortable with me I wonder and I say oh look at I'm very sincere my heart is well meaning what is all this nonsense until I land there is a heavy price for greatness let me educate you tonight my brothers and sisters if you ever believe that just because you are sincere well-meaning nice-hearted wonderful loving soft godly and then the world will have that regard for you please wake up jesus gave us this information welcome to the world it says you, if you are in the world if you go out of it you don't need to worry about this so whilst you've been praying for long life and god answered you better learn what will happen while you are living long you will be amazed to see people who disregard you and will go out of their way to show you you are nothing welcome to the world of man you will be amazed to know how many people will look at your messages and say this is nonsense you will be amazed at how many people will see your sacrifice and say this is nonsense what is there in having three children what is there in being great what is there in a phd i thought you would think everybody will celebrate you in this life and love you no let me tell you believers learn this because you see 
as believers I, I hope I, am i boring you tonight please please learn this you will need it in your life you know most of us as believers we are surrounded by ourselves so there is a culture that we grow with for many years everybody is wonderful even someone who doesn't like you really likes you 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 get what i'm saying so there's nothing like anger and fight when somebody say i hate you it just means you annoyed me now we are used to that soft brotherly warmth and we take that naivety to this strange world of wolves i will we'll come to that scripture you will find out that those that are in this world are not just men there is a name god gave them wolves you study from national geographic channel what wolves can do wolves are not friends do you keep a wolf in your house if another prophet was speaking you would think maybe he drank wine like noah or this this is jesus speaking pay attention to what i'm telling you because the moment believers step out of this place you are sincere and for the first time you've been hearing that they hate people now you are seeing somebody face to face i hate you period why sir this is even why i hate you again and you call joshua selman and say what is this i thought there's anointing for favor how is this supposed to work ask mary what favor did to her was it not because of favor mary got into trouble as soon as mary was declared to be favored of god the first thing that hit her was a scandal who is the real father of this child is it a ghost or a rabbi say i'm a virgin virgin of where and the bible calls that favor listen and learn you will stand in a place where they are giving bribe everybody is bribing and you say no 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 i love jesus christ there's no collecting bribe and because of that someone will look at you face to face and say you irritate me tribulation everybody loves you because you are like them make money get a job bring a new car and dance around and say brothers and sisters this is the faithfulness of god the year of extraordinary fruitfulness we are just in may by next week you will find out that there is now a problem with your shoe there is now a problem with your worship have you been taught that everybody should not like you have you been taught that it is okay to be controversial have you been taught that just because you are not loved by all just because there are people who trivialize your value it does not mean you are valueless learn this and be strong on time before ignorance crushes you many people will give up their success because of what people are saying and it's the same people that will run and carry it and say thank you it was a strategy i was hoping you would drop it so i will pick it Do you know how many people will continue to pray for you to fail when you are successful? They may not be Christians. They stand like the Magi looking at the stars, waiting for the report of your failure. Hi. This is the world we live in. Jesus is teaching here. Look at how Jesus is celebrated on a crusade ground. And the next thing he enters a city and people are looking at him. You mean you've not had that leper? This is the guy that healed him. So what? I remember years ago. I don't know if you can remember it, Jimmy. I went for a meeting in Congo. And that was when God really started celebrating me. Everybody was just discerning the grace. And this thing was just working. Everywhere I would go to, people would celebrate me, discern the grace of God, and sincerely honor me. And I went for a meeting in Congo. And I got there, and the people didn't even know who the guy was really and one guy just came i remember one funny guy just came and just pushed me like that and i just stood i was looking at him he may not remember but jimmy was he looked at the guy later on he was passing a comment about him. I said, ah, can you imagine that this guy just came and was pushed it was later they said ah, that's the joshua selman i was a man of god this and that and that is it not amazing that you are used to being celebrated until you get somewhere they say bros shift and they're like 
Whereas somebody say, my daddy, my, my, my way maker, my, my miracle worker. You think everybody will call you king of kings until you get to places where they will not call you king of kings. They will call you Beelzebub. And they will say it to your face. If you don't know this about the world, you will die of heart attack. You will hate success because the burden will be too much. You will say, I was better off by myself. Hallelujah. <laughs> now let me tell you the funny part. There are people who will now be educated on who you are and say, so what? You would think people would just know that, oh, this is Pastor Alpha, this one. Oh, sorry, you are the one I've been hearing. Say, so what? Well, how, well, how did you bring bread for me? What, what did you? I beg, please. I've had the privilege of meeting certain great men and women of God around the airport. And a few times, especially on my personal trips, I've met with them and I've tried to look for a seat just to come and greet them. And I've been surprised that some of those who were with them in maybe the lodge or wherever did not even recognize them and can push them and say everything and that person and you sometimes you can see the offense you are like ah, you don't watch tv again you don't know me i don't know you please i'm looking for my let it not surprise you my brothers and my sisters when people disregard you it is part of the things you should expect walking in the world don't carry a celebrity mindset and expect everybody to clap for you. You will meet somebody one day who will look at you and rubbish you head to toe. And if you do not have your intrinsic worth that is a derivative of who you know God has made you to be, you may not bless people again. Growth systems. Is someone growing? One last scripture. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. You will thank me for the things that you now learn. You will thank me sincerely. Not today. If you thank me today, you do understand what I said. You will thank me when you will need that light in the night. For many of you, this is broad daylight. Just keep it in your archives. The night will come. When you will be the youngest manager of your corporation and you will need this message you will play it again and cry and say lord thank you for preparing me behold now this one he, he now didn't say you are in the world he said i send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves each sheep they don't relate they eat sheep. When wolves see a sheep, they will tear it into pieces. Because you are a sheep, also be a dove. Be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. All this is because you are a sheep. Oh. Because you are a sheep, become a snake too. And become a dove. This is an advice. Being a serpent, you are not a serpent. You are not a dove. Borrow the quality of a serpent and a dove to make you a, an effective sheep. When a sheep must become a serpent and a dove to survive, it's a serious matter. Jesus is advising you. Hmm. I send you forth as sheep. But your being efficient as a sheep will require you to be both a serpent and a dove Sila. Hmm. you mean i must go that far to be a sheep i must first be a serpent then i become a dove yes sir all because my enemy is a wolf so it takes being a serpent and a dove to overcome a wolf it doesn't take just knowing how to run notice that the serpent is slow the dove is fast 
all of them are required. The serpent looks corny, intelligent, skilled. The dove is very innocent, many times naive. The purity of conscience. And yet the serpent is not ignorant at all. Serpents don't chase you. They would disguise you, come near, they hit you with their venom and let you to die. They just watch where you die. And then they slowly come to you and swallow you. They make sure that they swallow you where they can hide for a long time till you digest. You will never catch them. You won't see the trace. They don't bring blood out of you. There is no trace. There is no evidence. Other animals will eat and leave the bones. You can trace it back to the mouth and catch it and say, you are the one who ate this. A serpent will finish you and you will not see anything there. And Jesus said, be it to survive. Whoever taught you that just because you are born again, living in the cosmos will just require you to be a nice person. That's why you are not promoted in your office. Because you are a sheep alone. And you stood up before your boss and said, I'm a Christian. I won't collect bribe. I, will, I stand for Jesus. You are right. But you are not a serpent. You are out. There was a way to have done it. And you called it boldness. But it was not the wisdom that was required. There are many believers who have done what they believe to be zeal. They have, believed, they have done many things that looks like standing for Christ. I remember I had a friend years ago. We were on our way going to Joss. Very zealous, funny friend. And then from nowhere, and they were non-Christians. You know what I'm talking about. Real fanatics in that car that can almost slaughter you in a moment. And we were somewhere there and I was just praying that we arrive safely. And this my friend who is a sheep that cannot be a serpent just shouted praise the lord and then the gentleman began to teach and the way he preached he began to call you know the leader of that religion and all of that and he called this and was insulting the person and insulting and saying a lot of things ah there was silence in that car i knew i started thinking of which mystery i know what is the mystery of exemption what is what is the key how did how did how did daniel escape the lions then when you are a sheep without being a serpent and a dove you are in trouble do you know at the end of it sincerely i tell you the truth and i lie not if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking they were almost going to pack us in a mosque to slaughter us the driver started chanting something in anger and someone seated in the car too started chanting in anger. It's like something you, you know what I'm talking about. That this is an insult, this is that. And he does not even understand how sir. And then when he finished all that sermon, he said, I have a brother here who will round up with closing prayer. Me. Closing prayer. Hallelujah. Look up, please. Not every death is dying for Christ. Some deaths are the death of a sheep that cannot be a serpent. It took the grace of God for us to arrive just in peace. And I told myself I will never travel with this guy. I was not afraid of death. It was you I was seeing. Who would teach you? <laughs> Hallelujah. How many missionaries should not have died except for the way they approach their sheephood? There are people who just get up and do things anyhow. Listen. You must understand the cosmos to grow. 
Many of us know God, but we do not know this system. So the diplomacy to navigate this system, we do not have it. Everybody say understanding the world system. Number three, our time is gone. Goodness. I hope you are still following me. The first is your foundation. Second is understanding the world system. The third is you must understand value. I will rush this. We've dealt with this. I want to be able to reach the fourth one. Understanding value. Please look up. If you want to grow spiritually and otherwise in this world, you must understand that your growth, your excelling will be based on your value. And your value is divided into two. The first is your virtue and then second your skill. If all you have is education, listen carefully, if all you have is certificate and you do not have character, you will not rise in this kingdom. There are many educated people who will never rise to managerial levels because they lack virtue. They have transactable skills, but they do not have virtue. We have dealt with this extensively in this house, so I'm not going to dwell so much. Maybe let's just look at two scriptures very quickly. Number one, you know Galatians 5.22? You just write that. Then let's read Colossians chapter 3, please. From verse 12, Colossians chapter 3. I really want us to read. Put on therefore, okay? And then please prepare First Kings 7. Put on therefore, look up everybody. As the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, another word for patience, next verse, forbearing one another, these are virtues that you need to possess to be great and to sit at the zenith, the pinnacle of all that God has ordained for you. If any man hath a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, also do ye. Next verse. Above all this, put on charity. The Bible calls it the bond of perfectness. Let's stop there. Character. Many people have degrees, but they lack character. You must have solid character. The fruit of the Spirit. To be able to rise. There are people today who are employed because of their degrees, but promoted because of their character. When everybody has what you have, your character is what distinguishes you. It may be one of the reasons why many, many, many graduates do not have jobs. They have the technical skills, but they don't have the character that can back it. You can't trust them. First Kings chapter 7 from verse 13 to 14. Hmm, this scripture blessed me. We are now talking of value in terms of skill. We'll read it together, 13 and 14. Everybody read. And King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyre, 14. She was a widow's son. Who cares? But the Bible is telling you something. That the king sent for a man. He started his life as a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali. And his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass. And he was filled with what? Wisdom and understanding and cunning to walk in all works in brass. And he came to King Solomon and wrought all his work. He started as a widow's son. But skill took him to a point where Solomon said, come and walk for me. The Bible captured that information. He was a widow's son. His father taught him because his father was a craftsman and died. 
And although a widow's son, he still bailed him out, now to be in the palace. He didn't look for the king. The king, that means every king is searching. You say nobody is looking for me, it's not true. You are not the kind they are looking for. King Solomon sent for Hiram. He said, come, prove your skill, prove your worthiness. Nobody finds a skillful man with character and cannot forego any other excess to keep that person. It's true. Many believers have character but they don't have skill. Character is important but it's not character that turns products into services. It will take skill. Nobody will bring into their company to come and destroy them. And the only thing you are doing is praying. That's important. But they didn't hire you as a prayer warrior. They hired you to be productive. 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 You can tell them everybody who is stealing in the store. No problem. But what result are you producing? Otherwise you follow those who stole and, and you go. Your offense is you are not productive. Their offense is that they are thieves. Two of you. The door is open for you to go. Listen to me. Competence will pay you again and again. Let competence be your employer. Give your CV to competence. And it will pay you. You will never go on strike once for the rest of your life. Mediocrity, mediocrity will always produce beggars. It's a deception. It looks like you are there but you are not there. Many preachers love God, but they are not skilled. Many business people are not skilled. Listen to me. Many career people are not skilled. Value, your virtue, your character, that's important. But you must be competent. You want kings to eat your food, you must know how to cook food for kings, not men. You want kings to part, and I hope you know that you have not arrived until kings patronize you. The proof you are successful is when you serve kings. The gatekeepers of the mountains. They are the ones who don't ask how much. No. You rise from the realm of everybody asking how much to men who say you are too useful. I won't let you go. All oh, that will find men and women here who desire to grow. Listen, please do not let anybody trivialize the place of diligence and competence. Being skillful at something. Be a master at your field. Ministry is not for lazy people. Ministry is not for people who tried everything and failed and just came and just received the anointing. There is a skill even in the dispensing of the anointing. Preaching has a skill. You try it and find out how many people listen to you. Africa, let's wake up. Our incompetence will continue to whip us again and again. We compare ourselves with ourselves. I am better than this. I am better than that. If you get 10 over 100 and you are the highest, you still fail. You are just the highest of the failures. Listen, you must be competent from a global reference. Benchmark yourself globally. Don't benchmark yourself within your territory. Sometimes our territories are so mediocre, we don't have to do much to be that recognized. You're a businessman. Know your craft. Back and forth. You're a career person. Tell yourself you will rise to the best. The confidence that knowing a thing gives you is something only God can help you understand. I've met people who know what they are doing. Boy, there is, there is an aura of favor, a compelling presence that competence brings. Make up your mind that you will not stand at the gate of life and be chewing your finger. No, 
pay the price avoid premature manifestation sit down get something that even kings will give you a right hand of fellowship they will say we are great but you have seen all of us we have not seen all of you welcome they will welcome you by themselves you are a tailor so well you are a farmer farm well you are a public speaker speak well you are not the only one there and you are not going to pay yourself respect those who will hear you don't talk in a way that only you will understand are we together you are a scholar don't be lazy stretch to the zenith of your profession say i will be competent say it competence is more than a desire you must outsource the information that gives you an advantage in your field you are the best because of the scarcity of what you know don't find the things that are general find the things only few know that becomes your edge please listen to what i'm telling you i'm speaking especially to our brothers you must cause the spirit of laziness and mediocrity from your life prayer is no excuse for mediocrity mediocrity in our world today are those who will beg for bread and be they are the ones who will be writing all kinds of stories about successful people because of the pain and the effect that other people's success will cause on them make up your mind i vowed a vow unto god that i will never be a preacher that will have to go back and bury my head in shame find out what it takes to excel and give your all and give your best it may take a while don't worry conquer pain in your life do not ever let pain be an interruption to your success pain does not kill burn the candles if you need to listen to me burn the candles if you need to wake up in the night if you need to buy the books take the certifications go for the trainings I can cook for who who can pay you I can sew for who I have a hotel for who a restaurant for who I'm a good preacher who can listen to you can men of God listen to you or is it only those who want to be born again I'm a keynote public speaker who can demand you so much that no price of hosting you becomes too much listen you know you are valuable when no amount placed on you becomes an inconvenience the moment people begin to compare price and you and say Kai, is this not a bit too much is proof that you have plateaued on your value step up there are people that there is no amount to host them that becomes a waste their presence is like the presence of God one hour with them you must change you will never be the same it has nothing to do your own is to just make sure you are in contact with them the excellency of the information they supply you will beat your ignorance to its knees you will think you are just going to receive one or two things oh goodness in five minutes they will they will embarrass your pride by making you see how ignorant you are when you become like such people gentiles will come to your light you hear me challenge you all the time i will never become a pastor of weak people i've taught you how to pray and know god but i want you to be successful why must they think about you when they are downsizing it's a reflection of your value be as scarce as gold the same way people queue in front of a filling station they are not complaining the pump does not talk they need the oil so much they need the foil they will stay from morning till night to fill their tanks and pay you and still tell you thank you may god make you so valuable in the name of jesus preachers be so valuable and you will never beg for bread your blessings will come from the people you have raised you are not raising anybody there is no bread for the future
Listen to me carefully. You are not raising anybody. There is no bread for the future. There are men of God who are recycling the same kind of knowledge. Those who are growing know where they are getting it from. When they are blessed, they will go there. Raise men. When people complain all around and say, ah, why should you know, people be blessed? Why should a young man be blessed? Why should, what, what are you saying? When you raise people, they become too grateful to ignore you. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. It's important. Don't sit down and ask, how can I rise? It is valuable people who rise. When you become the delight of many, do you not know there is an aura of beauty that value brings upon your life? You become difficult to ignore. People will overlook anything. Be like water. Ah, be like cold water on a sunny day. How far can you ignore that? The water is not what is suffering. The effect of the sun on you will make you say, how much did you say it is? At 150. Why? Because it's cold. You are wicked, oh boy, you will still buy it. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, make me valuable. Make me valuable, O oh God. Take me out of the rat race of life. I need time to serve you and your purposes. You are showing me the growth systems of the kingdom. Take me out of the realm of competition. Let me rise to a dimension that is incontestable. Lifted by your grace and lifted by understanding. Is someone praying? God is challenging you. That may be why your ministry is not growing. Your call is not what is in doubt. It's not just an impartation you need. You need to grow. It's more than an impartation. Could that be why your business is not growing? It takes more than sincerity. Champions are not ignorant people. Champions do not have little knowledge. Champion have the knowledge that is an endangered species. Make me skillful, skillful. Hallelujah. Listen, before I go to the last place, our time is gone, but please spare me a few minutes. You need what I'm about to share. This is the, the, the highest discussion of all we are going to be discussing today. Before I go there, let me advise you. Always check your result against the level you are going, not against the levels available. When you preach as a man of God, listen to your messages again. Not just to be edified as a sign of humility, but also to learn. Oh, the people were following, but I can discern that I lost them here. Okay, next time, how can I adjust? I think there is a psychology to my communication. I need to know when the people are tired. I need to know when I've exhausted their understanding. My creativity is small. I need to step up on it. Please don't be lazy. Please don't be lazy. In the name of Jesus, sit down. In the name of Jesus, sit down. Get books, write. Wake up in the night. Stop snoring your night away. Sit down and learn. Buy the truth. Sell it not. God gave you phones. Go and download or buy apps that can help you. Sit down. Burn the candles while you pray. And you will watch the gates of your destiny open. Unhindered by whatever kind of factor you think can hinder it. I made a vow to myself that I will not be small. I shouldn't stand before kings and be ashamed. Do your homework. And you will not need to be afraid. Fear is for those who are not prepared. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Take away the shame that incompetence brings. Take away from your life the shame that mediocrity brings.
please receive grace to sit down and do your homework sit down and do your homework are we blessed number four the last key this is so powerful you must understand men let me take you to the world of men and teach you a few things men the fourth key to your growth is the understanding of men you must understand men as a species as an entity please listen god is giving us wisdom now luke chapter 16 the first eight verses nine really but eight we'll just stop at the first eight verses profound wisdom jesus is teaching again the rabbi no wonder he is called he is not only wise remarkably intelligent jesus is teaching us something to understand men are you ready to learn and he said unto his disciples there was a certain rich man which had a steward and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods follow the story next verse and he called him the rich man now called his steward and said unto him how is it that i hear this of thee give account of thy stewardship for thou mayest no longer be a steward he's about to lose a relationship with a wealthy man that's dangerous for him and the steward said within himself what shall i do for my lord take it away from me stewardship i cannot dig and to beg i am ashamed so what's going to be the way next verse i am resolved what to do that when i am put out of the stewardship they may receive me into their houses are we together now follow the story so he called every one of his lord's debtors unto him so you can see the kind of position he was occupying and said unto the first how much owest thou my lord six remember jesus is the one telling us this story and he said an hundred measure of oil and he said unto him take thy bill and sit down quickly and write 50. hi write what <laughs> and he said to another how much do you owe and he said a hundred measures of wheat and he said unto him take your bill and write 80. and the lord commended the unjust steward because he had done uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh i'm glad that i'm not reading from one zodiac book this is your bible you have it and the children of this world are in their generation talk to me wiser than the children of light that's the message the moral is not his approach the moral was his his idea the method was wrong the the wisdom was not how he did it the wisdom was the fortitude to understand that i'm about to lose something but i've not lost it if i have relationships so he said whatever i can do very quickly because the secret to my continuity is in the hands of men if i lose one man and i gain his friends i still have him listen carefully and he was commended as being wise his dubious attitude was not the wisdom the discernment to connect with people and use what is a representation of favor god told us what to do the moment you have opportunity use opportunity to build relationships you preserve opportunities by investing opportunities in relationships listen carefully you must understand the world of men woe betides anybody who does not understand men your wealth is stored in men 
your lifting depends on men your increase depends on men not just god if you know god and you don't know men you will still stay small understand men growth systems let me teach you three dimensions of understanding men very quickly number one learn the expected behaviors for every environment is called the law of protocol you are learning wisdom that will change your life some of you will begin to apply it from this night every environment has a system of protocol has an expected behavior you are not qualified to remain in that environment until you study the protocol of environment you go to preach in a church learn the expected behavior you enter a house learn the expected behavior you stand before a great man who can bless you before you get to him understand the protocol many believers are ignorant of the expected behavior and they step into certain circles and step out there are preachers that have gone to certain churches to preach and they did not understand the expected behavior they preach well but they will never go back to those circles again is God blessing us in Jewish days when you came to someone's house from a long journey you were never allowed to enter with a dusty feet you would stand outside and their way of honoring you was that they had men servants who would come with water and oil and a sponge they would wash your feet and clean it with toil as a proof of honor and then you are now authorized to get into um, the place to stay it's a principle many people do not know expected behavior you meet a wealthy man and they tell you this is a millionaire and he says sir anything for the boys sorry you he will give you something but you lost the relationship what he gave you will finish because you just showed him that what he has is greater than him in your eyes and he said you have it and go everybody say expected behavior you can't be going for a job interview and dress as if you are going to a movie theater there is a persona there is a protocol this is our ignorant generation we don't have regard for these things you're going to submit a proposal for a business that is worth 100 million naira and you enter with palms and a shirt that is a bit torn and say i'm a free person you are out no right thinking person born of a woman and trained under an intelligence system will host you i've taught you that appearance is the seed for acceptance you minimize controversy when you appear well understanding men i'm teaching you growth systems listen you must understand the diplomacy of managing greatness diplomacy is not compromise you will have the opportunity to stand near great people who will bless you who are not born again they may be vulgar in their communication they may even be sarcastic you can stand near a man as a married woman who is a wealthy um, man but has no regard for family and he can be explicit even in his talk you don't just look at him and say see i'm a child of god i'm a i'm a daughter of zion mm -mm, mm -mm. take it easy take it easy there are some times that your your answer should be with your body not your mouth your body language can speak it's very important i have one of one of the blessings that god gave me is the intelligence to understand atmosphere you must be of quick discernment to understand atmosphere i taught you this um um esther knew the right time to talk there are wives who never receive from their husbands because they don't know when to ask 
any time is not the right time. Me, I say my mind, that's how I am. That's why you are, you are where you are. Those who say their mind have all have been receiving a lot of things. Unfavorable, most of them. There were times Jesus kept quiet, even when he had what to say. Then he would say, okay, he who does not have stone, have sin, cast the first stone. There are times that Jesus looks at a man and he's about to leave his crusade to follow one man. Jesus. Have you started worshipping men? A centurion comes to you and you say, no, don't worry. I know that I'm praying for the rest, but I will honor you. Wow. And yet he's no respecter of persons. He looks at a short and a little man called Zacchaeus who climbs a tree and has a lot of regard for his sacrifice and his honor. And he says, Zacchaeus, you have dishonored yourself too much to honor me. Please come down. It's your house I'm going to. I must reciprocate this. I want to build a relationship with you. There are people whose interests I must protect. You represent a gate. Let's go. Your house is worth a crusade. Let's go. And Zacchaeus by himself, instead of Jesus on the tree saying, I will see you, but will you forgive this guy? He said, let's go to your house. That honor alone made him say, I will forgive these people. Bank people are very wise. Sometimes when they want to come and ask you to open an account with them and you are a big person, they don't just send you a text. They visit you. Say, how are you? Your birthday? It was yesterday. Say, no, it was last week. Oh, last week. So how are you? How is everything? I mean, uh, the weather is hot. They are wise. Expected behavior. By yourself, you will start asking them, so how is the service? Is beautiful. We are doing absolutely well. In fact, there's no other time in the history of the bank that we have been this night. You say, you mean it? Yes. In fact, we were hoping since you brought the issue, let's talk. That's why they came up and they are making it look as if it's a side talk. Many believers are not diplomatic. There are times you don't ask by asking. You ask by doing what is equivalent to asking. Oh, 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 your lifting has come. Oh, 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 your lifting has come. Oh, 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 oh your rising has come. So to understand men, you must understand the protocol of every system. Learn it. I've taught you that adaptation is a proof of honor. Adaptation does not always mean compromise. There are times you have to receive grace to bend, to create positive perceptions. Number two, you want to understand men, gain mastery over words. Gain mastery over words. Proverbs 16 verse 24. Any man in this generation who does not understand the power of words and how to use it to your advantage, you will destroy yourself and destroy important relationships. Words. Read with me. Proverbs 16 24. One to read. Pleasant words are as an honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Who runs away from this? Pleasantness to your soul, pleasantness to your body. Words. When you, when you watch Scottish films and all of that, the kings had these orators, right? That worked with them in the palace. Every time they had a delegation. I mean, those guys were poets like Shakespeare. They would bamboozle you with intelligence. They would, they would conjure words and just keep you spellbound. And at the end, you see people clapping. 
and they want to give the king gifts and they want to honor that nation words are powerful words convey thoughts words create perceptions master words you want to master men master words otherwise you can make your good be evil spoken of words are important words are important to great men they have developed their minds to be philosophical they analyze words mean men don't have value for words anything they don't think but wealthy people think you give them a document they will look at it intricately a poor man will just sign and say where is the money a rich man will say no 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 why is this clause this way God calls himself the word he knows how to speak he knows what to say for your life to change listen to me words are very important proverbs 18 20. i have seen people amass fortunes because they have mastered words a man's belly shall be satisfied not with what he buys in the market with the fruits of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled there is a relationship between poverty and words there is a relationship between prosperity and words and it's not just limited to confession understand people i've taught you this always preserve honor in your words the psychology of communication that the highest need psychological need of any man on earth i would drum this till you understand is the need to feel loved the need to feel valued the need to feel important never forget that and you will gain the heart of kings i've had the privilege to talk to people on behalf of others and some of those people hitherto had vowed to never provide certain help or certain things but a five minutes conversation changed their entire minds and they were more willing to even do the things that they did not want to do can you change a man's mind with words if you cannot you are not a master of words not deception not lies that a couple a marriage that is about to break and you use words to create perceptions in both of them and they are back words translate a man from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of god's dear son words are that powerful one word correctly spoken can give you a contract of millions one word wrongly spoken can destroy you I'm not just talking about grammatical accuracy. I'm talking about the understanding that words paint pictures. Words create perception. How are you, Pastor Alpha? Ah, well done. Huh? Let me touch your small nose. You say you are joking. This is a man you are looking for help from. You intended to crack a joke, but you just lost your job. Words. when i was a child i thought like a child i speak like a child listen to me please master words master words know how to talk to people there are times that your communication will require you to be agreeable there are times that you will need to stand in the position and speak from a position of weakness to be the strong one there are times you need to be weak to be strong strength does not always come as strength many times it is weakness that becomes strength words i've taught you a lot of words words such as salutation just greeting people alone for some of you you have lost favor because you cannot greet people you tell everybody how far including your destiny helper you enter an office and you are seeing people almost as if they are worshiping a god and you say bros how far says the manager oh sorry manager how far 
and he said go out are you here for the interview he said yes i'm a graduate of say, whatever and while you are talking go out psychology you match somebody sorry 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 words words you thought you just apologize no why do you have to employ mcs and people to conduct a meeting why don't you just pick somebody and say come and conduct this wedding what do the mcs know words someone who never planned to give 10 naira simply because he was honored he will stand up and say on behalf of myself and my wife they agreed on two hundred thousand. he said we hereby give 1.2 and the wife is looking at you. This, this is kind of honor is not for two. I won't disgrace myself here. You didn't ask him for money. You use words to do something that a charm cannot do to his ATM. Have your words brought you wealth? Have your words brought you open doors? Have your words given you things you didn't work for? Was it not because of what you said? that doors closed against you what you said to God what you said to man daddy let me tell you something I've been watching you every day just because you are my father I don't think I respect you I'm just you I will lock you up me yes your son and he looks at you and says no problem the day somebody comes and says the Lord is putting it in my heart to help somebody in this house he said, there's a house help. She just finished her ND help. I said, I thought you have a master son over my dead body. Rather give me the work in my old age. I'm retired, but I will work on contract. I will never watch you give this stupid son work. If he insults me poor, he will kill me when he's rich. Words create memories. Words create memories. When people remember you it is important for them to remember peace to remember love that's why business people go through the rigor of training themselves on how to talk there are so many business people in this ministry you people call Ejimi the apostle of wealth is the is the king king of the industry <laughs> You don't sell by intention. There is a science to it. Can I make you like me? Yes. Can I make you hate me? Yes. Can I make you give to me? Yes. I'm not talking of manipulation. There are people who use words like a chain and casted a, permit me to use the word spell on people they fish their destiny helpers with words and while they let the helpers follow them what are you doing i'm following you why words a word spoken in due season you may speak good english and speak nonsense psychology words please learn this some of you need to go back and find the five or ten people who have the power to be used by God to change your life start doing something with words uncle just to bless you and to say good evening sir um, it's been a while that I kept in touch I sincerely apologize God has been faithful I honor you thank you so much I know you are busy I will be glad to call whenever you allow me to you see that statement? You now look like a fool. The man will say, ah, this man knows I'm busy. He will call you by himself. You never say, instead of, uncle, how far? You are my only uncle. What did my father tell you before he died? Those, those, kinds, of, those kinds of statements, you will keep authorizing demons and darkness to punish you. Words are powerful. Your father and one uncle somewhere is fighting. And you are supposed to come in. Uncle, what happened? Question mark. Who are you? You are a child among the elderly people? No. 
Good afternoon, sir. I sincerely hope you are not offended that I'm even reaching you. I know I shouldn't be doing this. It is in no way to communicate dishonor. I understand that you and daddy may not have been, not fighting, may not have been at the best of state. And if it will ever make any meaning, I'm joining my knees and my hand on the ground to plead for the family. I know many of you are embarrassed and say, me, to subject. That's why you are poor. That's why you are poor. What are you proud of if you don't have what you are looking for? What do you think being great is? It's a combination of keys. Let me tell you what will happen. The uncle will not reply you. That's a proof that he has received what you have said. That's how men process things. Women will respond. Thank you. Men don't act like that. Men think. They will delete it because it's already in their mind. And think through it. Wow. This young man. What can I do for him? The day they see you, they will act as if you are not the one. But one day, when the light of God's favor will shine on you, they will say, I remember when this guy was 14 years old. I was having a challenge with the uncle. Can you imagine that this small boy wrote a nice letter and he said, Uncle, I'm 41. Say, you think I forgot it? They want to sack you from somewhere. The uncle will say, kill me before you sack this boy. Listen, let me teach you this. If you understand words, you can be everywhere. Where you are not, your word is there for you. Are you blessed? Don't just treat great people. Treat everybody. Words. Twenty-five verse eighteen. I really apologize. Our time is gone. We are going to round up now. But you will thank me, like I said. You may not thank me after the service. Some of you will receive instant testimonies from this. Just this, that you understand, man. You've been fired from your workplace, and you just construct a letter or a text and sincerely apologize to your boss, and that man is ready to receive you and even promote you. A man that beareth false witness against his neighbor is a maw, and a sword, and a sharp arrow. Speaking about words. This is what words can do. They can be so destructive. There are times the, the way to speak is to say nothing. That's how you speak. Hmm. I'm just imagining the results that will come out of your life. When you start engaging these things. Let me tell you, there is no power that can stop this from working. It's true. Every man is weak to words when they are right. Every man, including God. Was it not Moses that said, God, please, please, calm down. Don't let them think that you brought the nation of Israel out. And you didn't have the power to take them into the promised land. And God repented. God repent. This looks like small keys, but the wonders that these keys work in your life. Words. Two minutes. The last key to understanding men is understanding the power of endorsement. Please write it down. You will never rise beyond certain levels until a credible voice can endorse you. Please learn this. Please learn this. Endorsements are powerful. Man of God, you remain where you are in spite of the growth of the anointing until a credible voice can speak for you. Endorsements are powerful. You may not have access to the gate. So value everyone you know who is already at the gate. Because their recommendation, their referrals, their endorsement. I may not trust you, but I trust the person who spoke about you.
I have been blessed by the recommendation and the endorsement of people. When you see gatekeepers, don't ignore them. Value the endorsement of great men. It took a lot of sacrifice for their voices to be heard. Don't think you will push them aside. There are many young preachers who believe they can push any other man of God and just stand and gain a voice. Keep going. Save Johnny. Until you know that men are not that fragile. Before they listen to you, they will look at the person they listen to. What does he have to say about you? There are many churches, before I come, they ask questions. Who knows apostle? Who has listened to him? And then usually, one influential person will raise his hand and say, Ah, my son, I have not listened to him, but I overheard my, my son's life has changed. Please let that man come. Immediately. Every church meeting is over. Bring apostle. You would have been doing business with kings if the right voice spoke to you. John had to endorse Jesus. He didn't just ordain him. He endorsed him. If there is nobody who can speak into your life, not just in terms of prophesying, but to give a good word, you can easily get a job when someone speaks for you. Hello, please. Um, I know that you are collecting this, this oil company people, please. Uh, yes, that lady, number 76, please. She's my daughter, eh? Please, please, please. Don't worry, we'll talk later on. And that's it. You have gotten the job. Whereas someone else is saying, Father, help me. The angel of the Lord keeps hovering around his breakthrough. But there's no man to use. Because he ignored every He prayed and his prayer brought angels but he ignored men so there is nobody to speak for him number 24 who knows him nobody please remove him and give number 77 because three people have called for his sake the same thing with men of god do you know it's a terrible thing if you don't have men who can rise for you i don't mean psychophants Nobody to defend what you represent. Nobody to stand up and advocate for you. There are parents who don't have anybody speaking for them. The only person who can speak for them is their children. They didn't raise anybody today who can speak for them. There are times you are not the one holding the rod, but you can hold the hands of the person holding the rod so that they can speak. And say, if you ever need somebody to hold a hand, this person. There are times that I have been called. You may not know. But some of the students who graduate and are serving N NCCF and all of this. Sometimes I get text messages from the leaders who are interviewing new people. And I, they say, ah, Apostle, please, we interviewed so, so, so. He said he's a member of Koinonia. What do you have to say about him? We are considering making him this, this and that. And sometimes I say, ah, with all pleasure. He was effective. He was useful. That's it. You don't have to know. The same way right now while you are seated here The angel of favor Is at the ears of your helper But because you did not connect with them You didn't leave memories That will compel them to reciprocate kindness mm. That you continue to plant yourself In the hearts of people Through honor Plant yourself in the heart of gatekeepers Everybody who thinks about who to help Is thinking about you you will never go down that way. No. There are people who have eaten from your hands today who will never allow anybody speak evil of you. You have become part of them. Preachers learn this. Business people learn this. We are going to pray. We have stretched you today and I sincerely and truly apologize. But I give you one guarantee. You will see fruitfulness in ways that will surprise you. Please rise up on your feet. Please rise up on your feet.
testimony of your grace a testimony of your wisdom lift your voice and pray I declare it my life is a sign and a wonder a testimony of your power a testimony of your goodness a testimony of your glory Decree and declare my life is a testimony. Isaiah 62. Let's keep standing. Isaiah chapter 62. We'll read the first seven verses. And if I were you, I would believe everything we're about to read. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth it says and the gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the lord shall name verse 3 thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of god a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Mm. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. Thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighted in thee, and thy land shall be married. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. He says, Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Seven, he says, And give him no rest till he establish, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Lift your voice and say, Father, I declare, my life must become a testimony. I place a demand upon your grace. I place a demand upon your power.
pray. Give him no rest till he establishes you. Give him no rest till he makes your life a praise in the end. Shabarakatu Sabradishnara. Lord, we believe your word. We continue to press. We continue to press until we become testaments. Hallelujah. One last prayer point and then you'll be seated. Lord, my spirit and my mind is open. Not just your spirit, my spirit man and my mind is open. Lift your voice and pray. I receive illumination. Are you praying outside? Are you praying? My spirit is open. My mind is open. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Spirit of the living God, we are here again and we trust the supply of your power. We receive spiritual intelligence. We receive illumination. The Bible says, True knowledge shall the just be delivered. Therefore, Lord, we declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that we are rising from one dimension to the other and tonight oh god our hearts and our minds are opened in the name of jesus christ good evening everybody it matters to god that we grow it doesn't just matter to god alone that we are saved the entire tripartite nature of man must be involved in expressing the victory of Christ. Listen very carefully. The entire tripartite nature of man must be involved in expressing the victory of Christ. Your spirit, your mind, your physical body, your life, the entire three realms in the realm of the spirit, the realm of your mind, and even in the physical, the entire tripartite dimension must be able to successfully communicate the victory of Christ. If one or more of these realms um, does not successfully communicate the victory of Christ, you are going to limit the presentation of the power, the victory, the reality of the victory of Christ will not find full expression in our lives. Therefore, we must continue to press, listen carefully, to make sure that Christ is a contention and is a journey. To make sure that Christ is revealed in every aspect of our lives. In the realm of the spirit, you are sound spiritually. You are growing. You are conforming to the image, the character of the Christ. Are we together? Your life is becoming a representation of God. You are hosting very superior dimensions of His presence. Then your mind is enlightened. You are sustaining an understanding that is higher, far higher than the intelligence of the average human being. And then your physical environment, all the auxiliary systems that support the fact that you are in christ you are only fruitful in your christian experience when your entire tripartite being participates in revealing the victory of christ if i am sound spiritually and i am anointed but then my mind is barren and unfruitful there is a dimension of God that my life will never be able to present. Are we together now? Yes. If I am wealthy and I am influential 
and i have a healthy mind but my spirit is dead there is a dimension of god i will never be able to communicate the lopsidedness in the teaching about the revelation of christ through a man what the bible calls the mystery of godliness is the reason why there's a lot of unfulfillment in our christian experience so it's as though you should select one area where you want christ to be revealed and some selected finances some selected intelligence some selected spiritual health some selected influence some selected career and so everybody just selects and god says no i will never be revealed holy like that the entire tripartite nature of man must participate in revealing all of him if you're with me say amen, amen. so the assignment in building you by the spirit is to make sure that as we continue to press by his grace no aspect of our life is left barren and unfruitful are we together i have said it again and again that the vision for what we are becoming by the spirit of god through these teachings is very clear there is a picture already we are not guessing what we will be like are we together the bible says it does not yet appear what we shall be like but then christ has already exemplified all that we should become so we continue as we behold him as in a mirror the bible says there is a change a metamorphosis like an insect transits from egg lava pupa to the adult that's what is happening to us so never mind the fact that certain aspects of your life have not yet conformed don't worry your job is to be consistent and watch the wonder working power of the spirit A woman's assignment is to be pregnant the dynamics of the growth of the child leave it to god every day she just knows that there's something in my stomach whether she can feel it or not and then at a point she starts sensing that look this child is becoming real and then nine months later she gives birth to a healthy baby imagine that the woman gets worried and is wondering what part of him is growing now is it the leg or the head you are going to stress yourself a system has already been designed in you when your part is played god's part kicks in immediately so it's not everything that you need to know there are things that you need to know you don't need to know everything but the part you should know if you don't know it it will make god look unfruitful in your life hallelujah As we prepare for our retreat, I'm very excited about the weekend because for for us it's a time it's a time when our lives will never never be the same. I really believe it's the first time we're having two day stretch retreat. Usually one day will be for the leaders and then everybody, but the kind of information you are about to receive cannot be passed in one day you need to sit down and get this thing i prayed to god and i prayed for you i said lord they must get it they must get it when you get it it shows you said that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled you can doubt what you hear sometimes you can even doubt what you see but what your hands have handled now it's too real to doubt it hallelujah praise the lord tonight's teaching is a response um many times i'm led by the spirit to just bring teachings that attempt to respond to the issues around the lives of people as revealed to me by the spirit or sometimes it may not directly be a revelation it may just be that when i i examine the kinds of questions and the communication of the frustration of people as they send text messages and once i find out that a people continually 
need clarity over certain aspects then i know that is a sign that i should commit myself in bringing them enlightenment and i think that recently one of the areas that i would say a lot of people have had it's, it's a growing frustration is why the victory in christ the success that the bible says should follow a believer on account of knowledge partnership with the holy spirit and obedience what is really hindering the manifestation listen tonight's teaching is very powerful very very powerful because we know that for as long as realities are locked up in the spirit ephesians chapter 1 the bible says blessed be the god of our father you know uh, our lord and father jesus christ who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ so we are not in doubt over the fact that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ so we are blessed everybody say i am blessed that is a fact the bible declares it number two the bible tells us that we are blessed with blessings are we together now and the bible tells us that those blessings are spiritual in context when the bible tells you a thing is spiritual that means that you may not be able to use your sensory perceptions to confirm its presence it is locked up in a dimension that is higher than the three-dimensional realm listen very carefully and then number three the bible says it is in heavenly places that is where these realities are domiciled now follow me very carefully so we are blessed with all blessings how many all blessings all blessings this is the revelation of what grace is grace is any and everything only god can produce it's not just unmerited access any spiritual reality at all that can only be birthed and communicated by the christ and in the christ is called grace anointing is grace the wisdom of god is grace the peace that surpasses all understanding is grace are we together righteousness is grace mercy is grace every constituent that only the christ can produce is called grace please listen you have to understand this i define grace as every good and perfect gift that comes from above so spiritual blessings from above heavenly places but routed only in christ now the difference between grace and every other thing is that grace can only be obtained in christ an angel cannot be the basis for grace are we together now yes christ is the epicenter listen carefully now grace is very powerful when it is taught correctly that means if grace cannot if that reality is not captured in the christ you don't there's no point seeking it it's not available so before you ever begin to think of the possibility of receiving and walking in any reality your first assignment is to find out whether the grace of god has made that reality available and the way you know is to find out whether the christ his person jesus the door does he lead you to that possibility jesus said i am the way i am the truth i am life he said many things about himself he also said i am the door not just the good shepherd not just the bread are we together now so the grace of god is the basis for availability of anything the grace of god has in it the possibility for a man to be anointed that is why we can press for the anointing 
the grace of god makes his prosperity available the grace of god makes his righteousness available listen the grace of god makes access into the mind of god access into the gifts of the spirit available this is the correct and balanced communication of grace so you approach the grace of god as a summation the holistic picture of every spiritual privilege that only the office of the christ can provide you cannot route the grace of god through any other formula that does not mean you cannot receive through any other formula you can but if it must be by grace it has to be in christ <laughs> he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places so we are no longer in confusion as to the fact that we are blessed listen we just finished a series on spiritual stability and the goal was to help our convictions to be unbending meaning if anyone gets up now no matter how well meaning and indoctrinates you and makes you feel like there is nothing in store for you in christ you will respectfully know that as powerful as this is is an error because the bible declare that he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings now the next question becomes why then because you see listen i hope you know that you are intrinsically a spirit this is very basic tonight but don't trivialize it at all say i am a spirit not i have a spirit if you say you have a spirit you are wrong you are a spirit are we together now yes that spirit is domiciled in a body according to the law of territory if you are in the realm of the spirit you don't need a physical body are we together your spirit body is sufficient for the spiritual climate but if you are in this physical realm it was so designed that you must have a material body not necessarily a mortal body but a material body a body that is made out of the material of the earth so that you can be compatible with the environment that's why god made man from the elements of the earth when bible says god made man from the dust is a generic statement it doesn't mean god used mud it means he sourced the instrument of our physical configuration from the same elements so you can look at man and see similitudes of the things in man in creation for instance the bones of man are in the similitude of rocks that's why they don't decay a man can die and his bones can be there for a thousand years just like a rock can remain you see the hair of man you see it in the similitude of grass you can cut grass it can grow back your hair so it means god made man he sourced the material for your physical frame from the environment that's why the environment should not hurt you because you are compatible if your environment hurts you then it means something else is playing out are you getting what i'm saying now it's called the law of territory so when the word wanted to become flesh he needed to come in the similitude of a material body that was compatible to the territory where he was going to come and die if jesus was going to die in venus the planet venus he would find out thank god he is the wisdom of god he would have to reconfigure himself in the similitude of that that's the reason why when angels every time angels were to come to the earth they would either remain in the realm of the spirit and by the supply of the spirit they cause the eye of an individual on earth who is also a spirit to see beyond the three-dimensional realm then the angel can now communicate to you are we together now or the angel assumes a material body is a privilege that the angels have they can translate themselves and assume bodies and then come into your realm and at that point you will not need to see a vision again they can walk like you you can now use your natural eyes you can never see spiritual things with your natural eyes now if you think you saw it with your natural eyes it's just the interpretation of your mind i hope you know that you you don't see with your eyes <laughs> look at this shut down a man's brain 
keep his eyes open will he be seen you see through your eyes you see your eyes is the window that your spirit looks through but what processes that image is not this that's why if you read in the book of acts paul was blind yet he was still seeing visions that's why blind people can still be productive because what is responsible for imagery is not the eyes is the mind are we together now so the bible tells us that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places but the challenge now is that as you've always heard me say it here once it is true that we do not seek god because of tea and bread and money and fame and prestige all of these things are not and never will be the basis of loving and seeking god but god so designed this kingdom such that as you genuinely seek him listen very carefully all of these privileges and these blessings because remember he designed them and he designed them to be the support system for your serving him is that true that means that i will serve god effectively if i say i designed something to support you it means that you may you may not necessarily die without it but you will not be effective without it are we together now many believers are getting frustrated and this is the reason my message starts now they are aware because this is the word of god that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places but the frustration is beginning to grow how long do i have to wait how do i know whether something is faith or demonic or that i'm not obeying something because it looks like the time that we are waiting for that which has been resident in heavenly places to find expression when a woman gets pregnant she doesn't expect to give birth in two weeks but she also doesn't expect to be pregnant forever is that true she knows that there is a period of conception and she gladly she may not know the particular day the doctors can approximate intelligently but she knows it is around a season that my edd is on the 14th of september plus or minus the doctors will give 14th of september cannot be 6th of march that is demonic are we together that's too far so there is a time period there is an approximation that is the same way with a believer meaning when you start your journey this is you now you are starting your journey you should be able complete you should be able to know that okay by the time i get here what should have been possible in my life everything may not yet experientially be manifest but there should be what i call a token a consolation something that motivates you that i got it right okay i started five years ago praying in tongues one hour every day reading my bible five chapters every day reading my moonrose book after five years i should be able to look back and there has to be an evidence in my life it encourages me to know that the ones that have not manifest i'm getting there but when your life becomes ichabod that everything at all spiritually even if there's nothing materially let there be spiritual intelligence let there be the anointing praying one hour every day for five years to the same god of heaven and not one sick person has been healed through your hands and not i mean you have not seen any clear dream that came to pass at that point you know that something is wrong are we together many believers are now wondering then your spirit man receives that thing you are doing well spiritually everybody who looks at you knows that you are on fire but then 
relative to what god has shown you you find out that it looks like certain things are not happening then you are taught that you need your mind to catch up now and get involved in the process are we together when you start working with god your mind doesn't necessarily need to actively follow are we together now you you can't get someone born again and you are teaching him principles of excellence and this and that that's that's too that's too unneeded for that level when people get born again they are exposed to fire principles of prayer how to study the word understanding the foundations of righteousness are we together repentance from dead works they need to understand the redemptive work of christ they need to be introduced to the person of the holy spirit the value of corporate gathering are we together all of these foundational things they have to be involved but then eventually now you are in need your child is in need and now your mind comes in so you start renewing your mind by the strategic communication of god's word but then you get to a point where your physical environment is desperately in need of the manifestation of those spiritual blessings this is where my teaching is now the barrenness of god being represented in your physical life you may laugh because of the consolation you are receiving from your spirit man and the fact that your mind is now catching up but sooner or later the reality of time will start demanding god to be manifest in your physical life not just your spirit alone the vicissitudes of life will now begin to compel you to need to translate those spiritual realities into a context that is applicable to your physical life otherwise you will be surprised to find out that a boomerang begins to happen that the challenge that now obstruct your spirit life will start from the natural realm physically are we together yes so this gentleman has not eaten and he's surprised that he can't pray the realm of the spirit is affected by something that is happening here he's standing and he's watching two of his kids they are driving them from school and he cannot pay and when he started with god the issue of finances was not an issue but at this point as a father of two you can't ignore it are we together and he's getting frustrated when he started ministry everybody used to meet under a tree so there was no need for bench and mat if you fell down you fell on the grass but he took it a step further and he opened a church are we together and now you don't sit on the floor in a church and he just realized that they need to buy chairs and he just realized that in that church people will get married one day and that means the reality of family life their well-being that if the families are not doing well no matter how anointed he is very soon there will be empty pews now this guy is is there is a need for the revelation of christ to find expression not just in the spirit realm not just in the realm of the mind but also in the physical this is where many of us are now apostle the bible says great is the mystery of godliness that christ was manifest in the flesh listen he appeared to men he appeared to angels the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory you only behold that glory when he dwells among you are we together even the glory of the father and the bible says is full of grace and truth so i want to help us tonight to show us because let me tell you let me give you a very kind advice never allow your personal frustration make you doubt the validity of kingdom laws never allow your personal frustration i know this is very painful you are you are far from receiving the help of god when you take your personal frustration and create a vendetta between you and god from it and say lord as far as i'm concerned i'm doing what should be done why are things not working no many times the mistake is never from god a gentleman sent me a text today probably he's following and he was going to commit suicide by this night 
I don't mean this play play, I will kill myself. He really was going to do it. There's how you know that somebody means business with suicide. The kind of dreams he's having. The, somebody cannot just wake up and say, I want to kill myself. He's just looking for help. But there, there are things that can lead to, you know that this person will actually kill himself. And I was telling him, I said, no, no, you don't have to kill yourself. And the person says, usually this is it. I have done everything I know to do. Or I have done everything koinonia teaching says to do. Or I have done everything my pastor or the word of God says to do. I'm going to make some very audacious statements tonight and I hope it doesn't offend you. If it does not work, you are missing something. Hmm. The systems of the kingdom are so flawless. If you really get it, your life will wander and marvel at the results that will come. Now, this is an, an uncomfortable truth. But I want us to please, for God's sake, humble ourselves tonight and just lend me your attention. That if something is not working in my life and your life, there is something. You know, have you seen a learner learning how to drive? And then the learner is surprised. Why is this car moving that way? I thought you said I should talk. I'm doing my best. He thinks, based on his mind, that he's doing his best. But the professional knows what is wrong. And the learner will argue and say this and that and that. No, I don't, I don't believe it. I don't do this and that and that. When I started marking student scripts as school of ministry students, that's when I knew that many students that say they gave me are talking nonsense. <laughs> they gave me five. They gave me ten. As that's for, for, in, for many of it is, is complete nonsense. At least I'm honest, I'm born again and godly and I'm the one that is doing the marking. From a very unbiased perspective. And I'm surprised. Ah, if you wrote this, you should be joking to expect to pass. <laughs> now, but you ask the person who wrote it. I'm just using that as an example. You ask the person, just because he read and just because he wrote. You can do a mathematical calculation and be wrong. But just because your wrong answer is part of the answers and you got it doesn't mean you passed. The answer to the question may be five. But your wrong calculation gave you two and option A is two. And you say, I got it. No, you didn't get it. You just found your error as part of the options. Are we following? I don't want to live my life doubting the things I believe. Mm. I don't want to get to a point in my life where it becomes too late to be accurate. So I want to walk with you in a few minutes and I want by the grace of God I think for many of us I know what is wrong and I want to show you this night and I want you to listen. Because I'm speaking to people who are largely spiritually enlightened. So what is wrong? You will be surprised to know that the same frustration many of you are having, I had it too. Because I believe with all my heart that I was getting everything right. But looking from today's standpoint, <laughs> it was a joke. I even wonder how I can see the gaps that the mercy of God covered. outstanding success has a huge price write it down for someone this is already a deliverance because you believe that success just because the bible says he has given us all things just because the bible says the primary reason why many believers never succeed whether in ministry or in whatever area of life among other things is they misunderstand how spiritual things are both communicated and translated 
the idea of spiritual things being an inheritance in Christ, that word, if not well explained, can mislead you and make you fail. Now the Bible is saying, I have been given all things. If I have been given, it means my next and only assignment based on this is to receive. And you are not wrong. But the system of reception is every other thing I will be saying. For many people, we think to receive just means to verbalize by faith. I receive. You see it now? But that's incomplete. The same way the system of God giving you this. You, you see, the Bible speaks from different angles and different dimensions. And so when you are interpreting scripture, you have to first understand the context. What was the subject matter? that was being addressed because it will help you know why certain expressions were used when paul in his pauline epistle is teaching them on revelations of redemption you notice that his communications was uh, they were always from a standpoint of the finished work of christ you will never see in paul's context his exegesis on redemption he does not ever give you any idea that there's anything to be done so he lets you know that you are starting from a position of victory and that is correct with respect to your understanding of redemptive realities but now you switch to the other dimension which is coming into the experience of the kingdom and paul begins to change his communication it is not a he's not counteracting himself he is now showing you why should i want to press to enter something that is an inheritance so paul gets to the book of hebrews and paul now surprises us and even confuses many that in spite of the fact that you have been given this he said there remained a rest for the people of god are we together now he now begins to talk of the sabbath of the church and the sabbath of a man's destiny that until now there is still a rest that means until today men have not entered into the experience of this and he says today if you hear his voice he says do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness is that true and then the bible now begins to tell us that he heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them and he now introduces something strange he said not mixed a Jimmy's wife is a professional baker the word mix doesn't mean to talk it means it involves action it involves process when you mix something you combine factors together and the bible said not mix with faith faith is part of the many things that should be mixed not mixed with faith like you say you didn't add salt to the food the food is not salt there were many other things before salt arrived but for the taste you are looking for salt is the ingredient that must be added not mixed with faith in them that heard it and so many people are unable to translate these realities into their lives success has a huge price it truly is very costly the earlier you got this the better for you settle it once and for all that the birth of anything valuable is painful number two like i will always say failure too has a huge price tag many people don't know that it's not easy to fail they think it's very easy to fail if there is a price to produce the results that we need what is that price i'm not going to be talking of many of them i'm just going to mention one that i believe with all my heart that many people are not doing is the price of diligence write it down and listen very carefully please don't assume you understand what i'm saying the price of diligence proverbs 14 verse 23 read it for me if you are a serious christian one to read please but the talk of the lips only does what 
in all labor there is profit but the talk of the lips only will tend a man to penury there is a dimension of entering into your rest that requires labor requires diligence diligence is a trait that all successful people whether in ministry in business have many believers are busy many believers are taking action but they are not diligent write this down diligence is the quality of being productive write it down diligence is the quality of being strategic diligence is the quality of being resilient unbending the refusal to bow out diligence is the quality of endurance please listen to me in africa i don't know if it's a social cultural context but we have a very funny understanding about success we have all kinds of mentalities about success that are wrong in themselves but i think probably the worst of them all is how much we trivialize success to believe that god or government or parents or mother nature owes us are being successful or we just feel i may just put my hands here and there and then with just a prophetic word or just a blessing or just a, a a little oil on it everything just works diligence is not just hard work notice my choice of words you must be strategic you must be productive listen diligence involves the sacrifice of your time diligence involves the sacrifice of your energy diligence involves the sacrifice of your resources the sacrifice of your time write it down <laughs> ah, blessed be the name of the lord may god open our eyes tonight look at me let me teach you something everybody say time is money say it again you've heard it every time but what does it mean what does it mean by time is money that means that you are only rewarded when you create an event that makes men to have time for it listen Come, Pastor Lawrence, and your lovely wife. I was happy to see you people. Just celebrate them. Come, come quickly. Come stand here. Don't be embarrassed. Thank God you are a pastor. Look at this. How many of you know that last year we didn't have time for their wedding? Because the event was not yet created. Any time an event has not been created in the earth realm, there is no time for it. That means you cannot commit any resources towards it because there is no time for it. Both of them decided, when did you marry? What's the date? 15th? Now they, they decided to bring time and attach an event to 15th September. The moment they took the risk to create an event people started having time for them and resources started coming to them now that the event has been achieved nobody will give you money for marriage again because there is no longer time for it listen listen by 1990 there was no time for zuckerberg 
there was no time for facebook because that product was not created there was no event that will make you have time for facebook so a gentleman said let me make men have time and with that time will come resources and he made available an event and now we have time for facebook there was no time for koinonia before koinonia started your friday night were for something else the moment there was a vision that vision brought time to it and with that time every resource came is that true so when you say time is money time is not necessarily directly money time is only money when an event a creativity was added and attached to that time it will now make men to have time for you and with that time it will make them to have their resources so when you pay zuckerberg you are not paying him for the product necessarily you are really paying for the price he has paid to make you have time for that thing are we together now now you all have time for browsing once upon a time you could not do that on your phone somebody made that possibility with that time now goes your data your data will finish and you want to invest it when you pay data what are you really paying think well what are you paying time when you pay for a venue and they say from 12 o'clock to 6 is 60,000 what did you pay for if they give you a job and they say from 8 to 6 you are working what are you really paying for if you take away time on earth nobody will pay anybody for anything again are you getting what i'm saying now so there is an event and then men begin to invest in this and now they are married god bless you thank you ask him what it took to create that time <laughs> he summarized it in one sentence it is not i said that's my message <laughs> now, but is he married or not please talk you are laughing but i hope you understand what i'm saying is he married or not did the devil stop it but it is not 24 hours to your wedding there's no reception oh god take my shame that's 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 labor there it's labor in prayer and faith it's not just an activity in all labor there is profit <laughs> goodness it takes diligence please sit down sit down pastor if you are not diligent listen very carefully my brothers and my sisters there is nothing you will ever do and achieve in life if you neglect diligence there are many many men of god for instance i was listening to bishop oedeko's um, lecture at at benson idahosa the university there commemorating um, mama idahosa's birthday and i mean that that great man of god at that age was just crying out his life many people believe life is so cheap they just think just because there is the anointing that can accelerate a factor they believe that the anointing is a basis for laziness and lack of diligence many of us here the missing ingredient is that we are not diligent diligence does not mean you are not moving you are not moving strategically you are just busy around trying to hustle what business are you doing oh yeah let me join now what are you doing let me just apply i will apply everywhere by faith you believe that what you are doing uh -uh. let me show you something luke chapter 14 please let's read two verses 28 and 29 i hope god is talking to someone luke chapter 14 28 please luke chapter 14 28 
Read with me, Koinonia. One to read. For which of you intending to build a tower? Hold on. So you, you have an intention. You have a vision. You have a goal. But the Bible says the first thing you do is not to go and buy cement. The first thing you do is to do what? Sit down. And then count the cost. Whether you have sufficient to not start it. Finish it. You can know you have what it takes to finish it before you start. Otherwise the Bible will not talk about it here. You can know that I have capacity to finish this vision. Next verse. Less happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. In fact, let's let's read the next verse. Saying, This man began to build, continue till I ask you to stop, and was not able to finish. Remember, we're talking of completion here, finishing. Next verse. Or what king going to make war against another king? seated not down first and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000 are we together that you become strategic about your life not just to take action many young people pray in tongues they fast dry as soon as they are done they just get up just because the holy spirit told them do a and b they just get up foolishly there is no they, they don't have that strategic approach to life a man comes with his wife look at this you are married to your wife and you are acting as if how will the finances be run the spirit god is faithful is he not in this life you are not diligent let's pray wonderful but you are not diligent there is no planning there is no strategic approach are we together you have real issues that need to be dealt with but you just find a way of spiritualizing it and throw everything faith is not foolishness you are sitting down let me show you diligence how much do we have now 20,000 per month. How much do you need? 200,000 per month. We are, we are far from the goal, but at least we are aware of what we have. The miracle comes when you know what you have first. Remember, what you have in your house is already a sign that you are about to receive a miracle. Are we together? Yes. If you have 20,000 naira in your house and you are a pastor, that means there's no organizing conference. <laughs> There's no organizing any breakthrough service in the name of any hilarious vision. We are not diligent and we are not strategic. How many pastors are consistently in debt because they continue to organize conferences borrowing money and they tell you it's God that did it and they web themselves in a lot of shame and reproach. You borrow one million, invite five men of God who come for four now you think that just because it is spiritual you are not strategic about your life you will never prosper and you will not do well that way are we together a man is starting a ministry and all no members there's no track record of loyalty and you go and rent a venue where you are paying hundred thousand per month or per week believers if you don't listen to what i'm telling you you will be surprised that your life is not making progress a tongue-talking born-again believer is receiving salary of fifty thousand. you will find him in zaria suya spot he will buy five chicken one for apostle what you think just because you are buying for apostle means you are you are not diligent if one chicken is say three thousand and you buy five fifteen thousand what percentage of your salary is that all of a sudden you will find out two months later on that you forgot that your child's school fees is coming is it not funny how people forget they have children and then two weeks to resumption or three days they'll say ah sorry you i didn't remember where is the pta letter you are not diligent it's not about having money or not having money the same way people come to church when they now say time for offering they are surprised you are not diligent you are not strategic about your life you just stand and guess while the offering is coming quickly you just touch your pocket bring out everything and drop it you are not intentional about life 
I tell you why many things are not working for us. We are praying. We are happy. But we are not getting the level and the kind of productivity that should be done. I have prayed, I have fasted, but I took out time, the entire retreat. I'm not just going as the Spirit leads. There is something intentional to be inculcated in the people. And because of that, it demanded two days. It's not God that told me two days. The wisdom of the word and the level of investment I seek to produce in your life in these two days necessitate two days of training. The first dimension of being diligent is not hard work, it's being strategic. Being strategic helps your energy to be worth it. Many of us are dissipating energy, but we are shadow boxing. Apostle, it's not like I'm sitting down, I'm moving, I'm doing something. What are you doing? Have you thought about what you are doing? There are people who can start 10 businesses in one month. It's a sign that they are not diligent. They were not strategic over what they are doing. I just want to do something. I want to get my hand doing something. You are just hard working. You are not diligent. A diligent person will sit down. You will look at your lifestyle. You will look at your goals and your vision. You will look at what capital you have. The knowledge, the level of knowledge you have. You look at that business relative to your service. Relative to your life as a workforce person. You look at every other factor. How long do I want to do this business? Is it just to help me get capital for something bigger? Or this is a line of interest I seek to pursue? There's no diligence. That's why there is no sustainability in the things we do. We just jump at whatever we hear is happening. And do you know, let me tell you this. When you, when you continue failing for a long time, you will stop believing yourself. I've seen a lot of pastors, men and women of God, very anointed people. But they come to me and say, Apostle, why, why, why is my life like this? And I look at them, I say, do you know, sometimes they can even tell me as I'm talking to you now, I'm on a dry fast, three days. You know three days dry fast is not easy. Try it. Three days fasting itself is, is, but dry. When dry means no water, no nothing. And the person is, you are seeing the spiritual sacrifice. And the person is saying, I thought this thing comes by it. And you are saying, no. Let me tell you what you are doing wrong. I will not become your member. There are many things you don't know. You are not diligent. The man who tells you he wants members has not sat down to really think of what it means to be a pastor over members. He's not planned it. Ask him, have you done your homework to one those members? He says, I can preach. By the grace of God, I'm anointed. I'm a mighty prophet. I'm an apostle of God. Is that all it takes to run a church? Are you seeing that now? A lot has not happened. We ignore all of these things. And then he sees and says, Oh, one day we will take the nations in the name of Jesus. According to my vision, I saw doors opening. Uh-huh. What do you think will happen? So we just sit down and feel like, uh, Let's do a conference. Light and glory, prophetic encounter. Season one. You start. Now, I'm not being sarcastic. You just sat down and thought, okay what is this conference supposed to do to my members what is it supposed to do relative to their spiritual level relative to the level of ministry relative to our finances i'm bringing one guest minister from ghana i'm bringing one guest minister from london i'm adding apostle joshua selman from it what is your budget for the conference two million what is your entire church offering for a year five hundred thousand God is faithful. You see that? That is already a recipe for a struggling pastor forever. I don't care what kind of tongues he prays. There are many believers that don't have plan to one day have their own house. You see it in their life. Show me your notebook under God that I know that I'm in one small room but I'm already planning and these are the steps. I am being strategic. Let me tell you this. I stand before the God of heaven. Come, Ejimi. Be my witness. There is nothing you see being done in Koinonia today 
that I did not say will happen. He will tell you. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I can bring notebooks for you and show you where I wrote these things. And I wrote everything that will be done. When Koinonia was going to start, I told you that I saw CGC bigger than this. It was small, but I saw it expand. It's not just vision. So we began to prepare. When the Lord showed me that nations were going to come and all of these things, I sat down. I said, it takes a lot. I studied the seven largest churches in every continent of the world. It's not just prayer and fasting alone. You have to be strategic. At a particular level of ministry that I get to, I may not be outside on a bike again. Somebody will embarrass me. Will I have the financial level at that time to at least have a car? What if Koinonia needs to run Gen 24 hours? These are things, thank you sir, thank you so much. These are things that many people never plan for. You just sit down and say, let's have another baby. And God is watching you. Say, you, you, I, did you hear yourself? Let's have another baby. You see, Nigerians and Africa, we continue to punish ourselves and we continue to make a fool of God because we are not strategic. The baby comes and the man does not know what to do. They are confused and he's angry. You are the stupid woman. Why didn't you advise me when I said, let's have a baby? Say, is it my fault? And, and, all of, and the baby who is innocent there is watching. I say, well, so what is, what is going on now? What are you going to do with me? If I ask many of you here, my dear brothers and sisters, don't stand up. But if I say, how many of you are in ministry? Not will be in ministry. Are in some kind of ministry. Many people will stand up. And I look at you. If I say after 10 years, many people will be struggling. They will get angry. They will say, Apostle is proud. He's talking nonsense. He's being stupid. But I said this thing years ago that many ministries will struggle in the future because I saw by the Spirit that there were certain demands that 21st century ministry will require. And I said, Lord, I don't want to be stupid. I want you to show me what are the systems that will take to excel. And God said, if you can sit down and you are willing to pay the price, I will show you. When I was saying some of these things, people laughed at me, others insulted me, others said a lot of things. It's amazing how I look at people today and I look at the way they are languishing in the swallow of ignorance. God is the builder of all. But let me tell you, every house is built by someone. Yes. Diligence involves being strategic. You have to sit down and plan. In the name of Jesus, God is faithful, but I have to plan. What is the system for making sure everyone gets filled with the Holy Ghost in Koinonia? It's not enough to be anointed. Imagine that you did not put that system in place. A time will come, half of your members are not filled with the Holy Ghost. My God, that is some, that is some, some Babylon in your church. When half of the members are not filled with the Holy Ghost, you are in trouble already. What is the system in place for all of this? It's part of being diligent. Number two, diligence involves sacrifice. Mm. Many of us miss it in this area. Sacrifice is a non-negotiable price. If you want to ever be great. The sacrifice of prayer. The sacrifice of prayer. You see, the sacrifice of fasting, the sacrifice of staying till you understand the word of God. God is my witness whom I serve. I don't know how many hours I've slept from yesterday till today. And it's going to be a marathon into the week, just going. Don't get me wrong, I rest. But every man knows uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. You see that? While you are sleeping and praying, Oh God, bless these people in this retreat. 
open their eyes let koinonia service today be powerful bring the people let there be miracles let there be signs let there be wonders my brothers and my sisters no matter what god has given you the sacrifice dimension of success is something you must come to terms with it will cost you we are a generation that likes comfort too much we are a generation that likes pleasure too much we are a generation that is so averse to sacrifice the moment you have to constrain yourself a little we complain and shout and ramble yet if you see the kind of results we want it takes it takes a lot of sacrifice take sacrifice someone sent me a text and said apostle why are you not responding to me i've been calling you and you are not responding what is this and i just look i said this this man does not know the hundreds of text messages that i get every day and the things that i have to do i was counseling people yesterday counseling people in lagos i already knew i was going to miss my flight i told this my people i said you guys should just go to the airport i'll find my way just go i knew i was going to miss my flight but the people that i was is it was a strategic counseling and i said no 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 let me miss the flight you just go and they went as soon as we're done i went to the airport got the next flight that could come to abuja instead of just flying down to kaduna and coming to rest i had because of sacrifice i routed down to abuja and then from there now from the airport back i arrived in the night as soon as i arrived i just went refreshed myself and went to work immediately apostle joshua selman someone sent me a text and said apostle we are proud of you we saw that in lagos they gave you an award i said don't look at the award look at the hands that collected that award the sacrifice we like pleasure we like clapping but the inner price the price apostle what do you do that people are just blessed like this what do you do that they are not you are just talking and people are jumping up and down my brother and my sister is not a charm it's a price even a charm has a price my palace will not just give you a charm because you want to be diabolic do you know how much you are going to pay it's a price i can't remember the last time in my life i watched a movie I have television but it's off i can't remember the last time the tv in my room was on honestly sincerely why did you buy it then i must enjoy you it's my money then you will never become anything in life there is a huge price please young people listen being young does not mean to be indisciplined and careless you must be ready to be serious and pay the price it takes nobody just follows a leader just because of anointing it's a combination of many factors including a track record of consistency every member wants to know that the leader they follow is visionary enough there must be predictability to your destiny and your vision your life and whatever your mission is must be well articulated for anyone to follow you otherwise they'll come and receive miracles and just go away human beings are not stupid they are first human beings before members of any church sacrifice say so i receive grace to be sacrificial mm. sacrifice when you carry the money you should buy a book with and read and you buy shoe because you saw somebody buy a shoe of hundred thousand you allow a luciferian spirit to deceive you to go and buy a shoe of hundred thousand to prove a point you are not ready for the sacrifice dimension of greatness let me tell you it's not just when you have you spend there are times that a door can be open but you close it yourself because you know the time has not come it's not every open door that means god has licensed you to pass the door does not have to be closed to know it's not time it can be open but you limit it by yourself and close it because there is a season of appearing is god speaking to us sacrifice many of us are 
comfortable with little results that's why you find out that my many brothers and sisters men of god around this nation and the world they never go far they start small small signs and wonders small membership small miracles small testimony and you know that arrival mentality i look at myself and say apostle you've not started though you've not started at all you never come to my house i have received so many awards you never come to my house and see one picture that i snap with a governor or a politician or somebody from the presidency you will not find one i don't trust them they are deceptive you won't find any award on my table this he received award from this one this one he met with this governor this one he met with this you it's not joshua selman those things are deceptive I push them what you find is my future on my table not my past fill me up till I overflow I want to run over I want to run over fill me up till I overflow I want to run get hundreds of text messages every day apostle you are a sign and wonder the apostle of our time great man there is a testimony apostle we've been trusting god for a child for eight years remember you spoke to us now the child has come apostle let me have your account number we want to be sending this and that and sometimes i put my phone in front of me like this and i look at it i said lord deliver me from deception and complacency deliver me compared to where we are going this is only a step out of the cave there are still lands to conquer there are still territories what have we seen that we brag about there are deep things in the spirit when you have an arrival mentality you will never see the need to sacrifice to sacrifice in this kingdom you don't arrive oh you don't arrive all those who arrive are the ones who are no longer relevant when God is moving is God speaking to us many of us here are not willing to sacrifice show me what you are willing to sacrifice to be prosperous show me what you are willing to sacrifice to be truly anointed show me what you are willing to sacrifice apostle i like movie i'm like that we are all we are in our family it's a gift it's not a gift it's an appetite you have refused to cop it can be a gift even if you are called into the movie industry it takes diligence to sit down and plan can be a gift hallelujah let me tell you some of us need to trust god for grace to off that laptop off that phone off that television and say television i'm tired of watching other people fulfill the assignment i'm ready to sit down lord you are calling me into a strong apostolic ministry i open my bible not tv there is a time to watch tv but in the name of jesus i sit down when others are sleeping you wake up your eye wants to close they don't try it don't try it i'm going far Zakos kapatakata. lord open my eyes and you are hearing one message you are about to rest more there's another worship backing you up then there is another prayer confession as you are stretching fire on your spirit because you are preparing for an extraordinary life men of god there is no shortcut to this thing let's not mock god there is no shortcut that blood must really flow the way to the throne is the cross there is no other way hallelujah and you sit down the the the, the sacrificial dimension of diligence there are times that god will demand from you i have ten thousand that's all i have and god says carry it and give me and you sit and say god no you are uh, if you are really god your mercies endure you are new every morning all those statements of unbelief you carry that thing by faith and say lord i'm i'm let me be stupid for you let me tell you this show me a man who is no longer afraid of pain i show you a man that satan cannot do anything about 
when you when you master pain and it no longer touches you the devil will put his hand on his head and say what do i do with this person because pain is his edge in your life the moment you are uncomfortable you run away from that thing the cave you fear holds the miracle you look for that cave the cave that you are afraid of is because the treasure you seek is there you must trust god for grace and roll that stone and enter into that graveyard eyes closed and say lord if i perish i perish is god speaking to us yes say sacrifice say it shout sacrifice the sacrifice of your time the sacrifice of your energy many of you see what god is doing through this ministry did you know that sometimes as early as six or seven in the morning the workers are already at work you see this guy standing the worship team is behind me male and female no difference when you are in the worship team they are standing there so when you hear me raise a song and they are singing it's not robots human beings behind everything that works is a man making it work behind everything that works if you eat a delicious meal someone stood in the midst of the smoke to cook it if your cloth is nice someone paid the price to iron it please let us settle it once and for all nothing just happens if you are fed spiritually at the back of that revelation is someone's sacrifice we devalue the sacrifices of men in nigeria you look at young people talking about men of god and they have zero revelation zero result zero discipline zero vision yet they sit down and tear men of god they talk about men of god this guy is more anointed than this this one is more sound ah that other guy in uh, in, in ghana oh have you seen the one in this oh and they sit down and analyze any day you see sacrifice don't pretend you didn't see it stop by and salute it even if you are in a hurry the moment you see a man with blood and the scars of sacrifice please don't pass and ignore it stop and say i salute the investment of god upon your sacrifice it's the reason why when we finish service we allow our elderly ones to sit down it's not just because of favoritism the sacrifice of time the sacrifice of life the precious workers in this ministry some of them have been working since morning some of them will only go back early in the morning and some of them by by early in the morning they are going to start their work sacrifice the koinonia you are getting blessed by many of you when i mention a scripture you see it here at the back of this result is someone who is paying the price to make sure they do it well what do you want in life are you willing to pay the price or are you willing to let the price be paid for you no say i receive grace to be sacrificial one more time say i receive grace show me a man of god that will sacrifice in prayer that will sacrifice in mentorship that will sacrifice in the word whose heart is open to understand the systems of god my brother and my sister i show you a man of god that no devil no power no cause no charm in existence can stop show me a man who is willing to settle down and understand god's financial systems and pay the price i show you a man who will wave poverty forever and wave it goodbye forever show me a man who is ready to pay the price to be diligent enough to be valuable i show you a man who will never beg never beg never beg something happened when we were traveling to lagos very humorous story let me just say it. i got into the plane and then i saw i saw a couple and their mother they were shouting at Paul, so i said these people have come to embarrass me now and they were happy and then when we got down the mother came and hugged me said she has been listening to my message my son let's snap and we're snapping and the mother just squeezed some money i said mama don't do this i don't know you i'm saying you, you must collect you and i said ah this is somebody's salary 
and somebody is saying you must collect the key is not anointing is value value if you are not valuable no mama will stand behind you a a wise son makes a glad father a foolish son is a reproach to his mother nobody will be proud of you for not doing nothing let me tell you the truth i'm being hard on us i love you our retreat has started workers value stop packaging faking lying settle down and say in jesus name i must get this thing stop looking for money and trust god to piece together all the spiritual resources to be valuable they were carrying my luggage and then i sat down somewhere at the airport and the next thing i saw some group of boys i know how people look at me i just know that they're about to embarrass me again they came and said apostle ha ah, jesus this and that and that i was sad because i missed my flight i was on my way to pick another flight to come back and then i get into the plane and i see someone looking at me apostle and he shouted jesus i quietly went and i sat down there was a space between me and the next person true story yesterday the guy got up and left his workmate and came to me that he wants i said no you want to embarrass me here we started creating a scene and you know how people in the plane got ah they were happy the guy said i'm not going he wanted to kneel down there i said what is all this now ah this is a, a flight that is taking us guy said he must sit down close to me i said okay he sat down close to me when everything was done i didn't know that all through that flight he was busy packaging a lot of money he works in abuja and he just carried that i said no no no, i won't collect i will just bless you and i said once upon a time in my life this is what i needed to eat dinner and jesus was still lord if you are not valuable nobody will reward you my brothers and my sisters success is not a charm if you are not valuable nobody will reward you stop making demand of from life when you are not giving anything back it's a scam to demand from life and not give anything back so after you he said this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you wore a good warfare the warfare is not just fighting demons you are wrestling with prophecy in the name of jesus a word has come that god is my ebenezer to help you means you are doing something lord I'm, I'm i'm going to settle down and take my life seriously why is it that my help has passed me and there is nothing it's like a stench from my life driving them why is nobody coming to sponsor my ministry something is wrong value i don't share these testimonies to brag i told you about my pastor friend who someone called him and said please do you know apostle he said yes he said i'm going to transfer money to you send it to him for me the thing paying the man of god he called and said apostle what is this somebody doesn't know you and knows me then now sends money to my account and say i should transfer it to you i just cracked a joke and we laughed and laughed it's my very good friend value you can make up your mind and say in the name of jesus i will pay my children's school fees the whole session from the beginning of every year and then when you are prophesied like that you carry your spirit your head your mind into the room where the spirit of god breaks upon people and you say lord there has to be a way there has to be a way i can tell you this my brothers and my sisters when you mean business the gate of destiny must open the reason why many of us have not forced that that gate must be broken he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder the gate of destiny will not open when you stand and just speak english oh gate i'm standing here no stories you are, you are mocking yourself gate you must open you must open you didn't open for my father look at what he said him and his wife that nobody ever married legally i'm sure he made up his mind in the name of jesus i must marry a wife by paying a dowry and going to church when he was saying it the evil force he said let's see what will happen i did it for your father and your mother let me tell you something sacrifice is a covenant when you make up your mind to sacrifice it's like entering a covenant with god gather unto me my saints 50 verse 5 psalms they that have made a covenant with me 
by sacrifice. Number three, diligence involves resilience and tenacity. Now, this is where I want to talk a little and then we'll pray for tonight. Please sit down. Everybody say resilience. Everybody say tenacity. Come. Hold me. Try to resist me as I'm moving. This is how life is. No destiny will not allow you cut walk to the promised land. No, sir. There are not only giants in the gate. The giant starts from Egypt. They will pursue you. It's not just the giants on the promised land. There are giants where you are going. There are forces that will stop you. So you are to hold me again. You are trying to move forward. And these devils that have stopped everybody want to stop you. It takes faith. You will fail many times. And you say, Satan, I will wear you by my consistency. Whoever told you that just because God spoke to you, you will succeed at first. There is difference between failure as an event and failure as a person. Believers, this is where we miss it. The average Christian, when he fails once, he will bring all kinds of jargons around and excuse and say, you see this, this and that. And Christians, we are very good at making people to stop rising. The moment you do something, you, you, God told you you are going to take worship to the nations. Your first album, you bought it by yourself. I won't disgrace myself like this again. Sorry, Mr. Man. That means you are not ready to get to the nations. Life rewards tenacity. You put the first album, it doesn't work. You say, I know I didn't get anything right, but at least it gave me exposure. Let's go to write the second song. The first one i just composed nonsense the second one i'm not just going to involve the holy spirit alone i will involve a music director so both the holy spirit and a music director is involved to help you balance some of the things that will make people like us not to buy it are we together and now by the time you balance it your second album comes with a greater level of professionalism a day will come you'll be standing on a stage and somebody will be waiting with a check outside to give you what would have been your bill for the first entire production the first time whoever told you champions become champions from day one don't you know that f success is overcoming many failures you never qualify to be great if you cannot ignore failure and keep moving god is speaking to someone already man of god just because you started ministry and nobody's patronizing your grace just because you started ministry every sick body you prayed for looked at you and warned you and they told you to never never come for their conference again just because the first sermon you made a mistake you forgot the scripture because of tension anointing will not drive tension like that it takes experience to drive tension you will need to do this thing many times ramble on the stage more than once twice and then eventually one day you will now begin to gain yourself you can articulate do you know what it means to be talking and looking at people and they are looking at you back especially if they are frowning at you you crack a joke nobody laughs you forget the scripture no amount of prayer will take that thing away it's a track record you must create so it's not a spiritual problem he say it's just the, the the challenge you face on your road to greatness you don't go back and say oh god but i fasted now what evil spirit and no evil spirit entered you consistency consistency a day will come you will build confidence you will be able to look at people and preach is god speaking to us say in the name of jesus I will wear failure until I succeed. The word wear there doesn't mean to put it on. It means to wear it. If my expression is not correct, find your own. The idea is frustrate failure till you succeed. Look, let me tell you, failure can be tired. I found out by experience that failure is personified like a being that can say, okay, I'm tired of this guy. Go, pass and the gate opens and you walk gallantly 
I can tell you stories of my failures and you will be surprised I remember praying for somebody years ago they took me to pray for someone on wheelchair I think I've shared it in maybe 2012 or 13 I went full of the Holy Ghost those days you fasted and prayed for everything even if they say lead praise and worship I prayed for I, I took out time if you see the level of revelation I shared and yet when the time came to pray all in the final analysis I prayed I laid hands and I know the man had faith because faith comes by hearing that guy gave me all his attention I knew his spirit was in what I was saying let me give you a little testimony as we come <laughs> let's laugh a little you see this guy here I love it Jimmy let me tell you this when I started teaching them how to get people filled with the Holy Ghost and the principles of impartation something happened one day I left a Jimmy and one lady he was to get her filled with the Holy Ghost you see when you see him talk now you are flying from your chair it's a track record I remember a Jimmy talking with the lady in you know he's very intelligent he shared every revelation when he finished he now tried the lady was tired she said I'm, I'm tired this thing I mean it's so it pained him and then I, I can't remember the story exactly I think he called on me and I came and I mean in less than one minute that lady was and we were going home a Jimmy was gloomy he just said but ah, that at least if she fell down he knew he would have helped her faith. I remember comforting him and said, Don't worry. Do you know why I'm taking out time to act this drama? So that you can be healed from that lie the devil is telling you. Amateurism is allowed in the school of success. Every professional was once a student. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't be ashamed of being a student. Just make sure you continue. So when you go for the meeting, and just like Apostle taught you, your blood is hot from SOM graduation. You received fire here and you just organized a meeting. And in the name of Jesus, you waited for word of knowledge. You were surprised. Nothing happened. <sighs> the crusade, you prayed, said, I sensed the anointing here. And the person who fell was there. And you just, everybody is looking at your error. And as soon as they shared the grace, you went back and said, Kai, of course, God will always leave himself with a witness. But you go back feeling, Lord, Abba, if I was wrong, couldn't you have even just done it? And then we can settle it later. God says, no, pass through it. It's a track record. The day you are coming down from your car and a blind eye is opening, that day people look at you and say, how did you start? You say, my brother, I didn't start with a blind eye opening. I started with finishing a service like funeral <laughs> because nothing happened prophesy to someone say pay the price say pay the price honorably <laughs> hallelujah ask every doctor here when they were students the things they laugh about now was once a thorn in the flesh ask every lecturer here when they were teaching him what he's now teaching the students he didn't smile at some of the things abi pastor alpha you can look at some of them and say this thing is hard yet today you are the one teaching it hallelujah so you stand today and declare in the name of the lord and someone is blessed you are learning the principles of finance and favor you get up with that zeal and go and start a business you start a popcorn machine with the fire from the book you read and you eat your popcorn alone nobody comes you just say it's an evil spirit no sir look let me tell you this if you learn this tonight you will not be ashamed of your pain again the next time things go wrong it's not always demonic sometimes you just say lord i thank you look at the apostles think how many times they were embarrassed do you know what it means to be mentored by apostle jesus this is Jesus we are talking about, the apostle of our faith. Having mentored some guys full of grace and truth. And then they went to pray for an epileptic patient. Mentored directly by Jesus, not John, not Moses. And they laid hands on that guy. 
in the name of Jesus and the guy was not healed the people would have beat them there to kill them if Jesus didn't come on time but a time came hallelujah Peter when Peter is in a room they line sick people not for a crusade Peter is about to pass and his shadow mastery they call it mastery a realm and a dimension had come did you know once upon a time in my life I would never speak for someone to fall under the anointing no I will lay hands then you will fall so if I want five of you to receive any impartation I will patiently follow what I didn't have the luxury of just making a statement where who, who dash monkey banana but you ask the devil in the pit of hell ask him he knows that you stand and make one pronouncement and open the tulip gate over men's destinies it's not just an impartation it's a track record are we together now listen tonight i want you to know that failure is not the end is a pathway to success this is the level where many of you are now that's why i'm explaining to you you are there now and you are praying and nothing is happening lord come through for me now and it looks like your heavens are closed and you are already getting angry you are already getting frustrated father i thought apostle said that if we finish dancing i've danced and danced and danced i put my prayer request i danced through the night it happened to me to don't think it just manifested let me tell you something the future you are trying to enter a large part of it by god's grace have entered i can tell you what to expect it will do you like a dream the day the day the legal claims of your training is over you will wake up one morning into a realm that you say god tell me it's a joke what is this what is this see a day will come you will look at your life and not find any scar and you are saying where did it go to and god says enjoy the blessings of your endurance when you see someone going to nda you see how they treat him when he's going to what they call the first level tamawan yes but by the time that gentleman is about to stand and give his last parade he stands with honor the fearful weak guy five years ago is now the warrior of today they can send him to my duguri and he says where is boko haram i'm ready to face them some of what you are going through god gives you victory many times by bringing your fear and you together there is a relationship between your fear and you and the spirit of courage sometimes running away from your fear will destroy you so god makes you strong by making you stay at your fear until you become friends your fear will no longer run away from you is it not the rent you stand with the landlord you stand with the policeman and finally you will learn that police does not kill landlord does not kill you no longer fear then the miracle comes and god will say it's not that i could not supply it i wanted to build your heart so that you are strong notice that every time you fail if you use it well it can impart faith in your heart this is something until you are in the school of the spirit it will never make sense hallelujah Amen. you can turn your fears to your miracle man of god the fact that you gave a word of knowledge oh i'm seeing pastor james on you say no my name is pastor alpha uh, your your wife you married judith say no sir if you are not if you are not serious we will drive you here my wife is called and your, do you you have five sons no sir we have two two i'm seeing a girl no sir i have a boy and you turn back and say god if you didn't send me why embarrass me i can go back to i can use my accounting can what is it a bank i can't go and work in a bank and god says you are a prophet to the nations let me tell you do you know while you are help him oh my god you see that do you know that while you are complaining god never talks to you about that issue he gives you another assignment he now says all right that lady go and meet her stand before her before i'll tell you what to say say mm -mm. god what is her name first say no go and stand and you now say young lady no i'm not this kind of guys if you think i say no 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 i know you are somebody's wife god just sent me so i talk fast already the, your your hearing is hazy by her shout 
listen he's training you so that the day you stand over a nation and say the lord said i should speak over this nation no matter who writes an article writing nonsense you have been immune there is a vaccination you have received all these people that cry over little persecution you were not trained well in the school of the spirit is god speaking to us oh god is calling me to be a kingdom millionaire and god says so you're fifty thousand and he said lord please I, I, is he you confirm it in a dream and you have five dreams in the night to show you it is him you even see yourself giving it you ask god to confirm every other thing you won't you will have a close heaven but confirm this one at once it will come and you keep giving like a fool until one day someone advises you and say look i know that you know this destiny we take it easily and god says listen to me and one day in one year when the rewarder of man ah oh, 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 oh. my help has come oh, oh. Listen, I will never forget the first time in my life I started seeing a strange manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It was during our second crusade. I remember going to minister in a church. That was the first time I would mention people's names and see them run out by the anointing. Like I mentioned your name and you run out. I said, what is this? I've never seen this. The signs don't go before. The signs don't go with. They follow you listen many of us believers let me teach you you are in a season right now where your failure does not mean god is not speaking are you hearing what i'm saying please listen very carefully the fact that you may not get it right physically does not mean the anointing is not on you the fact that you did the business and it failed does not mean that kingdom financing anointing is not on you the fact that you preached and your message looked like nonsense all the revelations you gathered evaporated is not demonic it's a track record go through it and see what you will make out of your life you pray for the first person he's not healed say lord while i'm learning what i did wrong who will i pray for again and god will say there is a cancer patient stage four in shika i say lord this is too much don't embarrass me like that and god says well it's up to you you can choose to disobey me when you look at that cancer patient even you by yourself you you'll be afraid what did you come to do here i i, I came to pray god sent me now i was and he said oh, yeah pray let's see as soon as you pray on your way going out you see that the person has died they say if if you are not careful we will arrest you and you go back and say god what did i do is it not the call and god says no son you continue i am birthing a mighty healing ministry to you a day will come listen a day will come in and through your life it's no longer the issue of who is healed or who is not healed again your ego has been so strong it's now about obedience not results that is the day you will has somebody on a wheelchair and he will get up you didn't plan the idea was not to pray for the sick but you had gotten to a point in the spirit where you are not an amateur again this is how god builds this man that you see my goodness i can't begin to tell you about my failures you think it's every message i preached that was impressive no what you see today is a track record of many years man of god i bring you a word of hope don't let any man despise you you know sometimes we men of god we have a way of intimidating especially younger people and we make them look like there's no hope for you it's a lie if god brought me where i am there is nobody that cannot rise with greater fire and grace don't fake visions if you are not seeing it be patient you can see a real vision start where you are and be patient take the risk you will make mistakes not you may you will but don't allow it dampen you you have to believe in your destiny enough to know apostle 
look at what i'm doing my life is empty god where are you uh -uh. Uh -uh. you may think that you had a revelation that this guy is your husband this girl is your husband you go and meet her and say sorry i'm engaged and you go back and say god but you spoke to me he says no problem you are learning how to hear you are learning spiritual precision a day will come you will be a master and your voice will be like the voice of god upon the earth and when they look at you remember remember brothers and sisters little samuel too had a problem when he was hearing god the man whose word never fell to the ground a day came he said is it god or not god eli i'm not sure the bible captures the story of his learning but now look at samuel a man like a god upon the earth another man looks at him and his donkey starts going back home what changed a track record of consistency are you ready to pray diligence add diligence to everything that has happened an unbending resilience lord you have called me into the worship ministry even if nobody invites me i will continue writing songs lord they may not place a demand on my grace but i will continue i will give my best to it i will pay the price brothers and sisters i guarantee you this that looks like a simple message if you pay attention tonight you will wear life out until the gate is open for you lift your voice and begin to blast in the pray in the spirit for a few minutes my hand has come My hand has come
Listen to me. Listen. Moses was ordained and anointed to be a deliverer. He didn't know how to do it. He killed an Egyptian because he was not strategic. God took him. God did not take away the assignment. God showed him how he would do it. It will be by a rod, not a knife. Moses, you are called, but you are using the wrong tools. Some of you, you are called, but the tools you are using is why you are failing. You are called into business, but the tools you are using. You are called into ministry, but how you were mentored is why things are not working. The information given to you, it is true that you are a deliverer. You are called into the prophetic, but the way they taught you the prophetic is why it looks like divination. You were called into wealth and abundance, but the person who mentored you may have been a greedy person, and he made it look like the call to kingdom wealth is a call to materialism lord correct my strategy lift your voice and pray correct my strategy something is wrong not with the vision not with the assignment the strategy may be wrong lord correct my strategy there is a way i'm doing ministry that's why i'm not getting results it's not the call it's the strategy pray this prayer lord correct my prayer strategy correct my bible study strategy Correct my leadership strategy. Correct my strategy. The assignment is correct, but the approach is wrong. Lord, I'm missing something. I know I'm missing something. Please pray tonight. Why is my church not growing? Why is my ministry not growing? Lord, I don't doubt the call, but I doubt the strategy. Correct the strategy. Listen. Listen. Please look up, everyone. Hear me. Tonight's meeting is very powerful. For many of you, you don't need to correct the vision. You don't need to correct the assignment. You are right. But the strategy is what is making the result to not come. The business you are in is correct. But the strategy, the ministry is correct. But the strategy, you were not supposed to have a church. It was an evangelical outfit. You went to open a church. Now nobody is bringing money for cheers. Let me tell you, you are not free till the pattern is given to you the pattern is the strategy it says go and fill seven vessels with water that was the strategy go around jericho that was the strategy walk on water is not enough to want a miracle lord reveal the strategy for my result for my result result in ministry result in my spiritual life lift your voice and pray Reveal the strategy. Reveal the strategy. Hallelujah. Look up, please. We'll soon be done. I want us to pray over our finances. Look at me. Many of us here, this is where we really need God to come in. God has blessed you with all blessings. Right now, there are many of us, there's not much you can do with your finances. You are going to say, Lord, open my eyes where is my strategy not our strategy where is my strategy for ministry how do i finance ministry
how do I finance my business? Lord, I'm about to get married. Lord, I'm married with three children. What is the strategy? Lift up your voice and pray. Show me, oh God. Every financial exploit comes with a solid strategy. Your ministry will never be financed until you receive a strategy. Your life and destiny may never be adequately financed until you receive a strategy. What is the blueprint of God? Please pray for Ionia. Don't take lightly this prayer. Hallelujah. Listen, please look at me. When it was time to cross the Red Sea, the strategy for Moses was take your rod, stretch it, the river parted, the ground lifted. When it was time for Joshua to lead the people through, listen, the strategy was that the, the I think the, the, the priests, the, the, the Levites or so, went in front and then the Jordan parted. When it was time for Jesus, the strategy was not to part the water. You would die there waiting for water to part, whereas the strategy has changed. The fact that God is not doing something the way he did it yesterday doesn't mean he's, the, he's not the one doing it. Give us this day my strategy. Give me this day. Lord, the strategy that started ministry from zero to hundred, I've exhausted it. What is the strategy from hundred to one thousand? What is the strategy? Lord, the strategy for my finances as a bachelor, as a spinster, I received it. But now I'm married with three children. What is the updated strategy for my daily bread? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone met me last week, a dear lovely man of God that I love so much. And he called, he said, Apostle, how are you doing it? You have been transporting people since Koinonia started. You are doing all of these things. You don't raise money. You don't do anything. You don't cajole. You don't invite preachers to raise. How do you do it? And I looked at him. I said, my brother, you must stay with God, not just to understand the call. Many of us, once you get the call, you just stand up and start running. No, the strategy is your advantage in any battle. Ask any military man. They call Operation ABC. That ABC is the strategy for the victory. If they say Operation this, the military people know that this is the formula we are using for the takeover. Strategy. When we started, I remember when God came and told me, said, son, the last meeting for every month is dedicated for a miracle service. It's a strategy. You will just get up blindly and go and make the last meeting of your own program to a miracle service and not get any result because it is a strategy. Every strategy has an anointing on it. You see us gather prayer requests here and I pray on it. For Bishop Oyedeko, his strategy is the power of the spoken word. You may not see anybody fall down under the anointing while he's speaking. But the strategy is that he uses the creative word, power of the word. Or a robot, his strategy was to lay hands. He didn't just speak. If there were 1,000 people, or a robot will lay hands one by one. But if he touches you, be sure you are standing up. Strategy. For Benny Hinn is to worship. Very sensitive, annoying worship sometimes. He can tell everybody, hush. And you are saying, what is this? I remember once upon a time they had a program with Archbishop Benson Idahosa and he was worshipping, worshipping and one time Idahosa came and collected the mic and said rain is coming 
and the Dawos had just started shouting and that's how people started getting healed because the strategies are different William Branham will stand and say the angel that was assigned to him has not come and that's how he will wear those people there William Branham will stand like a herbalist and say he's apologizing let the people be patient and then at a point he will just say the angel has come word of knowledge he will start moving in a strange way and people attacked him he said that's the blueprint that was given every man of god if he sits down and he's honest with you he will tell you the strategy there is how i know the power of god is ready to move i can't teach you i can teach you generically but there is a strategy it's like the palm of your hand is wired for your use as a man of God, I cried to God. I said, Lord, what is the financial strategy for this ministry? Because this ministry will grow. And now, the, the mass media that is supposed to be an avenue, most churches raise finances. A major part of the finance that runs ministry is from the media. And now God is saying, give the messages free. Don't sell anything. Imagine the hundreds of millions of naira that it would have brought. And now it has gone. Lord, you have to reveal it. Ah! When he comes to you, my God, when my God comes to you, he will tell you something that does not make sense. But you are stupid enough to take it as a strategy. You will join those who are clapping for you to wonder and say, Lord, I fear you. Hallelujah. Yes. There is a strategy. There is a way we do ministry here. It's a strategy that God gave. For Dr. Olukoya is prayer. He will raise prayer points and he will pray. And while you are praying in that prayer, the power of God is moving and touching people. There are many people. For Papa Iya Deboye, he will stand and in the calmness of his voice, make a prophetic declaration and people will come. For Reverend Dr. Uma Okpai, he will raise a song and while he is dancing and singing, people are rising up. Don't copy strategies. Receive strategies. Listen. I assure you, and I want you to hear me as we round up. Believe me when I tell you this, that you will never fail. You walk with these truths that I teach you. You walk with these things that I tell you. It is arrogant to unnecessarily tamper with the equations. Many people, they don't have results yet, but they tamper with the equations. Receive it with childlike faith. Don't let anybody tell you this thing doesn't matter. Do they have the results you are looking for? There are many proud people, and I say this with every sincerity of heart. There are many proud people without results who go around talking against people who have tremendous results. Love everybody, but don't give your ears to people who don't have results. You will become like them. No man can give what he doesn't have. hallelujah can we pray one last prayer point i want you to challenge the spirit of laziness lukewarmness listen it says i would that thou were neither hot i mean either hot nor cold i would i desire you are not diligent and you are not completely lazy you are just somewhere in between if you are very hot i can make you hotter if you are cold i can know you are cold and help you but you are dilly-dallying in the middle of nowhere you are going to pray and cry that laziness especially the spirit many of us sincerely i love you and i don't mean to hurt or embarrass you but many of us are extremely lazy lazy to a surprising degree especially for a young man lord destroy laziness from my life lift your voice and pray financial laziness spiritual laziness intellectual laziness take it away from my life take it away from my life 
take it away from my life. Are you praying? permit me to add for us one more request we are going to pray concerning this issue of value i'm sure that by god's grace i'll speak on it again for workers but we are going to pray listen 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 if you are not valuable koinonia listen to me those outside those online listen to me no matter how you convince yourself if you want to reign in today's world, what you have must be exceptional. If everybody has what you have, there is no space for you. Did you hear what I said? If everybody has, this is not about competition. If what you have can be given by another person, cheaper or freer, you are in trouble. You must trust God to brand you with a level of value that makes you so unique no devil of poverty or failure or mediocrity or inferiority hangs around you i told you that a man of god was praying for me one time and he laid hands on my head and said father create a problem in his region that only him will be able to solve i thought I, in my mind i felt so bad because i said i know i'm somebody who is for the body i don't like this thing of one person outshining others what kind of prayer is this but when i understood value then i prayed that prayer and i said in the name of the lord jesus christ create something oh god for me i thought it was a joke there are many preachers but there is one joshua selman the same way there are many people but there is one hb there is one when we want to hear the voice of sam amaka cannot sing like sam sam cannot sing like amaka if we want to hear the strings elijah and the music director don't play the same thing listen when god makes you exceptionally valuable sit back and watch the power of the sabbath work in your life it will be like a charm the way men will run and come to you i tell you this thing i'm not lying to you take away your wrong mindset listen to me you want to prosper and rise in today's world is more than a job you need to master value in a way and manner and it will shut the mouth of darkness i look at my life today If you listen to what I'm teaching you, my brothers and my sisters, you will sit back and wonder and say, what is this? Life is, it will look unfair. Don't think it's happening just because he's called Joshua Selman. It's not true. It's a law. Can you pray that one prayer as we're ending? I give you two, three minutes. Find a corner and cry to God. Lord, I'm not unique enough. I'm grateful for what you have made me. But I know there's something that you can put upon my life. That every time someone says Pastor Femi, every time someone says Pastor Alpha, I thank God for everybody for that uniqueness. Pray. Grant me the grace to be valuable. hallelujah listen your value is what brands you is what identifies you as to whether you are rewardable or not pastor lawrence is so good in the graphics when you needed to to write the names of school of ministry students as anointed as i am you didn't come to meet me because with respect to that i'm totally not valuable 
It's not an insult. It's the truth. Tomorrow, when we want to cook for the workers, you are not going to meet Joshua Selman. Nobody has ever come to meet me for advice on cooking. As sincere as I am. You won't come because you don't consider me that valuable. Nobody has invited me today to sing praise and worship. Does it mean I cannot sing? But I'm not that valuable. There are many options. Why should you be picked when there are easy options to you? I vowed and I told God, I will never go and minister anywhere that they'll say, Mr. Man, thank you. This is your honorarium. Go. And the next time they discuss, when they bring Joshua, they say, No, please, no, no way. I will never do that. So I pay the price in the word. I pay the price in prayer. I pay the price to know what to do and what not to do. That's the key. And it will bring you to to suck the breast of kings they will give you access to their treasures treasures that they would not even give their relatives and you will stand and wonder and say life can be this easy koinonia hear me if no one is looking for you it's because you are not valuable enough don't be angry take this truly if you are not valuable enough nobody will look for you are we together? Yes. There are people I've met in my life. It's amazing how as soon as I met them and discern their value, those who used to provide that area of value, they are, the doors of my favor towards them close immediately. There are people like that. Are we together? There are people who are doing one thing or the other for me. It's dangerous if you are easily replaceable i say it again it is dangerous when you become easily replaceable that means in this life you will not amount to much the consequence is that you will be angry you will be resentful you will hate everyone that's why i'm an advocate for mastery you have to trust god for grace to know whatever he's granted you grace to do and know it well if it means adding educational qualification to rise to that position of uniqueness do it if it means reorienting your mind even against what you study do it whatever price it takes to stand you out Paul, a man approved of God. You stand out. Not in a competitive way, but in a unique way that brands you. That's why I don't have enemies. I don't insult anybody. I don't fight anybody. I'm more than grateful to be me. I don't think it would have happened that way if I were not this valuable. If I were not the one behind all the mighty testimonies by the Spirit of God that this ministry enjoys, probably I would have joined the many people insulting others. Do you know when you have results you don't hate? It's true. It's true. There's no need for it. I live a very happy and peaceful life. That's why I love the body of Christ. I honor everyone. Resentment is a product of an awareness that a replacement is likely to happen to you. But when you stand in a position on part of, look at Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn is friends with him. He can bring any man of God to his program and talk with joy. Because we are talking of Benny Hinn here. By the privilege of the grace of God, Benny Hinn is Benny Hinn till he goes to be with the Lord. Kenneth Copeland is Kenneth Copeland. You can preach everything. When Kenneth Copeland comes, he is Kenneth Copeland. God's system for faith. insecurity and competition and backbiting and all of these things happen when there is an intrinsic fear that a system of value higher than yours is within a vicinity so rather than fighting you trust god and say lord lift me the popular hymn says lord lift me up and let me stand huh? by faith on heaven's table land it says a higher plane than i found lord set my feet on higher ground that's the prayer father we thank you for tonight i have spoken to your people addressing what may be the gap between them and their results 
And Lord, I have spoken by your spirit as you have inspired me. I ask tonight in the name of Jesus that these words will be spirit and life to the listeners. Lord, as they subscribe to the laws of diligence, I pray that their results will come speedily. In the name of Jesus, that those who laugh at you now, their tongues will cleave to the roof of their teeth because they will see the wonder-working power of God in your life. I pray for someone here who may be discouraged and is wondering, Lord, I've done my best. I've done my best. I speak a word of hope for you right now. And I declare that you will have the last laugh in the name of Jesus. That which you are doing by the Spirit will work for you. It may take time, but as surely as the sun arises after a night time, your result will come. I pray for the grace to be strategic in your approach. That you will not dissipate energy randomly. And I pray for the fortitude to be sacrificial and that with pleasure. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for you that in the name of Jesus, the grace and the ability to be tenacious and unbending, the resolve to stay through, may that grace be supplied you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands to Jesus very quickly. Lord, we thank you. There's someone here saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. We're in a hurry, but it's no license for me to leave this place without a genuine encounter with Jesus. Another person is saying, Apostle, I love God, but the way my life is right now, I think that I really need a restoration. You may be inside, you may be outside. Wherever you are, please, I like you, even if it's just one of you. Be bold, be courageous. Take that step and walk towards me right now. I want to pray for you. Koinonia, appreciate them. Someone is coming. God bless you. Someone is coming. Is this the best you can do, Koinonia? There are people outside. If you are coming, join them quickly. God bless you for your courage. God bless you for your courage. Keep clapping, Koinonia. Jesus is bringing them. Jesus is bringing them. Those coming from outside, please clear the way for them very quickly. Join quickly. I want to pray now. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, those of you in front. I love you and I appreciate you. While we wait for those outside to quickly join them if there are any, I want you to raise your right hand. Say after me very sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Please join them. Join them. My sister, God bless you. Those online, you can join them to say, Lord Jesus, I love you. Say it again. I love you. And I believe that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I ask you to forgive my sins, to cleanse me with your precious blood. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. I declare that from tonight, I'm a child of God. Amen. Thank you so much for this great decision. Please follow the lady waving her hands. All of you in front, God bless you. Follow that lady waving her hands. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.